And welcome to Life is Spiritual Presents Real Life Testimonies. My name is Baba Zion and I'm here with my beautiful wife once again. Erika Mukisakimani, a.k.a. Mama Maisha or Mami Zion and Zef. Amen, amen. Yes. And we thank God for another opportunity to share an awesome testimony with our dear sister by the name of Celine, Celine Acheng. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. you are more than welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Amen. Yes, as uh, Baba Zion has said, my name is uh, Celine Acheng. I'm so delighted to be in the, on this platform. Mm. I thank God for both of you. They're doing a very great work Amen. for the kingdom. Amen. Maybe you might not know it, but uh, outside there, people lives are getting transformed. Amen. Yeah, Amen. and uh, people are getting to know that uh, life is spiritual. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so we give God all the glory for this great work. Amen. Yeah, I reside in Mombasa. I think we should start with a word of prayer. Yes. Okay. yes. Yes. And uh, Celine Achen, is it a Ugandan name? Because we have those names in Uganda. No. Oh, it's from uh, Nyanza. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, <laughs> so we should start with a word of prayer and get to know more about our guest. Opaki Yesu. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Glory, glory to God. All Bishop right. Winnie, hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Amen. So. Wonderful Father, Abba Father, Yahuwah, our Elohim, we honor you, we glorify you, we glorify your name, and we thank you for the gift of life, and we thank you for the opportunity to share testimonies, because your word declares we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives unto death. And we thank you for the opportunity to share with others that they may be inspired, encouraged, delivered, healed, sanctified, and set aside fit for the master's use. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would take over this meeting and you would remind us of what needs to be said and prevent us from saying what does not need to be said because every moment is precious. May Yeshua Hamashiach, our Savior and Messiah, be glorified and be highly lifted up that he may draw all men unto himself. And Father, may you be praised as we proceed with this work. In Yeshua's name, we immerse every soul under the sound of my voice in the blood of Yeshua. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yes, like I said, I come all the way from Mombasa. Uh, and I am born again. I love Jesus so much. I serve in the ministry of uh, praise and worship. Wow. So I do worship. I'm also a recording art artist. Yeah, we'll get to know why I fell in love with worship wow. uh, later in the story, Amen. in the testimony. Yeah, so um, I was born uh, in uh, Ongata Rongai at Pumwani Hospital <laughs> wow. in a family of uh, eight. Initially, we were nine, but uh, one of us passed on. Uh, sorry, sorry. My, yeah, thanks. So, um, when I got to know uh, myself, I was about five years. We are three brothers and three sisters so we won we were four sisters and three brothers so our second born passed on so um we were left three so i got to know myself when i was five years uh we've lived uh with parents whom have grown uh, knowing that they are dedicated to the things of God, but they were dedicated in the wrong denomination. So when I was growing up, uh, I started becoming tormented at the age of five years. Okay. So uh, it was one night when uh, we were sleeping, 
in my parents' bedroom, uh, I felt somebody fetching water in a super drum from the drum that is, is used for storing water. So um, in a little while, I felt the water being poured on my back. So I, 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 of course, I, I, I woke up, I screamed, and I ran to my, my parents' bed. So when I went there, they were also, uh, they also were, they got scared of uh, what had happened. So they woke up and uh, they asked me what is wrong. So I told them that somebody has poured water on my back. So they did, since they did not understand, they thought maybe it was a, a nightmare or maybe a bad dream. How old were you at the, at the time? I, I was five years. Five, okay. Yeah. So my dad told me that I should go back to my bed uh, uh, because maybe it's a bad dream. And then I told him, no, daddy, you can touch my back. It has some water. <laughs> then he told me, maybe you have to to yourself. You have to on yourself. So just go back and sleep. We shall check that in the morning. So I went back to sleep. And I was so terrified. Actually, I did not sleep that night. I remember just covering myself inside the blanket. And I, wait, I, I stayed awake until morning. So as we were growing up, uh, according to what my mom was telling us, that uh, our sister, our firstborn sister, uh, took time before she could speak fluently. Uh, reason? Uh, they tried our dad was working at uh, bombers of kenya so we had uh, free access to medical so they went to the hospital to check on her speech but they could not help it so uh, but at the age of five is when she began speaking fluently so and then she also told us that our pa our second born sister passed on due to some unclear circumstances so when we asked uh, she told us that our dad was advised by an aunt she was critically ill so our dad got advised by an aunt uh, who was uh, i think my brother's my 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 dad's sister so she advised my dad that he should take her to the witch doctor so my dad did since he was born uh, as the only son and uh, one sister. So she advised her to take her, our sister, to the witch doctor, of, of which he did. He took her to the witch doctor oh. and then she passed on. Oh. So she could not tell me the reason how, how she passed on. And then now when it got to me, when I was born, I also fell sick, according to my mom. I felt sick, critically ill. So I later on realized that there were some issues with the girl in the family, with the girls. So um, she told me that I was also critically ill when I was born, almost dying. So that is what led us now to the denomination, to the religion that they, they, we grew up in. Mm -hmm. So uh, we grew up, so I did not know because I was experiencing some dark forces all around me and I realized that it was not only me, it was like all of us. So my parents was very committed to this church. So when I got to know myself is when I knew that they were so committed because they had seen a miracle. <laughs> I was sick. So as my dad was advised, so he did not go to the witch doctor, someone advised him to go to the uh, church, that religion, uh, and then I got healed. So to him, serving that religion and fully dedicating himself was, a, was a really a pleasure to him. So we went, we used to serve there. I remember when I was young, I, 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 was, I, I could be asked to lead uh, to lead those choruses for sacrament 
it's a religion called Legio Maria, the ones that they put on rosaries mm. and those pitambas and candles. So mostly it's attended by our people from our our clan. But nowadays from our from Nyanza, but nowadays I see like everybody just uh, goes to the church. So I used to lead choruses. Uh, I was fully dedicated because uh, I was like the daughter of that to that altar. So I was really being pushed by my parents to commit myself to it. So uh, we were very committed. So our dad, uh, having working at Bomas of Kenya, he was uh, a bit we could say a, a rich guy at that time because he could afford uh, a good house, he could afford food. So him being so dedicated to the church, our home like a, a hosting place for the church. Like every Sunday he could, he could uh, uh, invite people for lunch, like the entire church, a church that has about it had about about uh, 30 to 40 members so imagine uh like 40 members every sunday you are hosting them and my dad it was his pleasure actually to buy food and drinks so they could come he treats them well some of them they could say that their spirits cannot take a tea bag so our dad could buy them chocolate drinking chocolate some of them could say that their spirits uh, don't, don't take uh, <laughs> coffee <laughs> so that we could get them whatever they wanted. <laughs> so dad would feed their spirits. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so dad would gladly <laughs> feed their spirits because he knew he was serving God. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so it was really his pleasure. My mom being a cook, she loved cooking so she was uh, genuinely cooking for them. So, so your dad thought he was serving God by, yes, by yes. doing that. Yes, yes. Actually, not even thinking. He mm. knew he <laughs> was serving God. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> the God that healed his daughter, uh -huh. you know. So he really committed us and himself, his money, uh, to, to this church. So um, we could wake up. I used to have eye problem. My younger brother who follows me immediately would have the same problem on his eye. So we were like, we were like shifting. My dad is going with me to the hospital for eye checkup. And then uh, they, 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 they cross with mom. Mom is taking the younger brother who introduced me to this channel. And then dad is taking me home. Mom is taking the brother. So we were like every time uh, in the hospital. So we had an eye problem. Uh, it got fixed later on through their prayer still. So our dad continued, continued uh, getting deeper, knowing, getting to know more uh, those uh, prayer people because they were in different stations. So we got another one from Karen uh, Dagoretti. We got another one from... Uh, park place as you go to uh, the side of Karen there was another one there so these people they used to come and pray for us in shifts so whenever these uh, people left on Sunday and then that night they have come they have partied we have served them and now they are leaving they have done us prayers of course you expect that a house that prayers has been conducted it's a peaceful house Yes. Yeah, you feel peace, you sleep peacefully. So we could have nightmares that night. We could have night nightmare like the whole week. Uh, my sister, my elder sister, used to wake up without her pants. Uh, one day she wakes up with her hair cut at the middle. Oh no! I wake up with the scratches on my arms on my legs so you are noticing these things when you're going to take a shower 
Mm. So when you're bathing, is when you're noticing, oh, I'm feeling some pain somewhere. Yes. And you're like, oh, when you're checking your your you're back scratched. or your arm, you have long four fists. Oh, wow. The same to my brother. And remember, the prayers continued. So they left on Sunday, these prayer people. They're coming back on Wednesday. So they have different kind of prayers. They have a white candle prayer. They have a red candle prayer. So we were conducting like a white candle prayer on, on Wednesday, a red candle pray, prayer on uh, Friday. So our house was like a house of prayer. What kind of prayers would they say during um, the white candle prayer? They just pray in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, but they use the rosaries and they light the candles like this table is filled with candles. White. And then they have the altar. The altar that has photos, photo for a dark, a black guy called Masia, and another woman covering herself with those like Masia. hijab. Yes, that's Messiah. Yes, yes, those Muslims hijabs. You know them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a woman there. She's called Maria. Okay. And another one for Jesus, and another one for angels. So in their houses, even in our houses, we had an altar. Yeah, we had an altar where. We cannot just pray any, any from anywhere. Like here, you can pray from, from anywhere. Mm. Could go to that altar. So when they come, we are conducting the prayers facing the altar. The altar. Yeah. So we, even the red candles, they would do the same arrangement? Yes, yes, yes. The same arrangements. And what did this Jesus look like? <laughs> the Jesus is the one drawn in the, the common one. The one that is the white over. one. Yeah, the, the white Jesus. White guy with long yes. hair. But the Messiah mm -hmm. is a black one. Oh, so there's with, another... Uh, yes, a with Messiah. some stiff hair, not combed. Another Messiah. Yeah, another... They call him Melchior Messiah. <laughs> wow. And then another one is a woman wearing hijab. And uh, what's her name? Maria. Yes, they call her Maria. Uh -huh. So, uh, that is how they conduct their prayers. And then we are kneeling down. Oh, that was very serious. You could not laugh during prayers. When you... when You, you know, when your children, you are having fun maybe you are kneeling another one is pinching the other one yeah so it's like i will slap you people or the picture of messiah will slap you so we were like we were <laughs> they were putting fear in us yeah yeah so even uh stepping on that altar while wearing shoes you couldn't you could not get near the altar while you are wearing shoes that is their their i don't know their rule their setup and then you would put on uniforms Yes, the white the candles, white? Uh -huh. the even the ladies. Yes, and even uh, us, the kids, uh -huh. used to put on just like uh, the Catholics. Mm. Yes, you put on the white. Mm. When it's a red uh, mass, you put on. You can put on or the padre is mm. putting on the red candle. Mm. When it's purple prayer, you okay. There is even purple. Prayer. Yes, and then they are wow. calling them by the names of the angels. So there is an angel, a purple angel. There is a red angel, Melchior, they call him. Uh, Mikhail, Michael. Mm -hmm. Yes, they call him Michael. Uh, different kinds of colors. And so, so something on the head, the colors? Yes, yes, something on the head. The same color matches oh. through to the head. Okay. Yeah, so these were the kinds of prayers that uh, we, were, we, were, we were being conducted at home like every week thrice so and the torment continued once they come we are not sleeping i remember i remember us even going to bed you know when your kids you play you play you play and then you go you go bath outside behind the house mm. so it's in the night it's around um around what, uh, 7 p.m or 8 so when you go there, our dad could tell us that you can go early, learn, you people should learn how to go bath early because when you go at this time, the demons will take you photos while you're naked, when you sleep, when you are bathing and your children. And you know, we could, uh, I could be bathing and then you see a flash. Cha! So we did not know that uh, they believed so much in these things that they became a reality. Or they gave these spirits the chance to do whatever they wanted yeah. with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 
we kept on uh, serving faithfully. So as we were growing, these people, they were not bringing anything good. They were not bringing any good fortune mm -hmm. with their prayers. And then, uh, of course, some of them, not having the Spirit of God, not many of them would come to pray genuinely. So some of them are inside there, their wishes, their what. So when they are coming, they're not coming with good intentions. Because you could just put another one just uh, pretending as if he's kneeling, but he's like doing witchcraft, you know. So um, after sometimes, as we were growing, uh, our dad lost his job at Bomas of Kenya. He used to work also at Silver Springs. He lost the job. And then uh, from the posh life whereby we were being provided by everything, now uh, he started like not having a permanent job, hustling. You know, with, he was an hotelier. So with hotel industry, we could not stay for long without having a job. Then he was experienced. So when he goes somewhere, he gets one. But now these people, uh, we really our dad really trusted them with us. So we could go to, he could take us to Karen. Uh, this was the main one, the one, the, the one at Karen. It was the main prayer person, like the one who was feared by the entire religions. There were different branches. So he was the feared one. When he comes to this branch, like everybody submits. So when uh, he noticed that our dad is financially good, so he became a family friend. So he was our prayer pa person every time. So we could consult him on, on, on difficult uh, issues. So he used to send us there. We go. He used to send us to the other one in at Park Place. We go. So when we used to visit, used to visit uh, at that time, uh, our elder sister had uh, finished class 8 and then she got pregnant. When she got pregnant, uh, she went to stay somewhere that people could not see her because of the shame. So I used to go and visit her there. So when I go visit her, this 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 uh, prayer person, I don't know what, what to call him, a pastor or a padre, this prayer person, he could send his grandchildren. He used to live with his grandchildren without their mother. We don't know where their mother, we never what? knew where his wife was. So he used to live with his grandchildren. They could come to a place. We could go to, his, to their place. And then my sister now was hidden there. So uh, one time when I went, he, he, he said he was praying for me. So I was, he was praying, he was asking me whether when I'm running, I, I normally feel pain here at the, at the waist. And of course, when you're running, you feel pain. But now that you're a child and you respect this person, you just accept everything he's saying. So I said, yes. And then uh, he pretended he was praying and then he raped me. So when he raped me, um, my mom was... Uh, very harsh as sure. in she was a no-nonsense woman so she was so protective and uh, she was married when she was so young so she knew uh, by uh, the way of protecting her children is by fighting so I knew what she was capable of doing if I told her what had happened so at that time I was in class 4 so I just went on with life as if nothing happened, but I say to myself, I will never go back there again. Class four so, is like yes, fourth grade. Yes, basically. Yes. How fourth, old were you by grade. then? Fourth grade, I was around ten. Oh no. Yes. Oh. I think I was ten. So I really suffered. I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. I I suffered wounds. I suffered uh, bad smell, suffered so many things, you know, I couldn't understand. So even my mama at times she would say, you go and take a bath, how are you? You know, I didn't know what to do. So 
it went on until I felt, oh, now I'm okay. So I kept it shut until today. My mom has never known what happened. So that was another uh, defilement. So, and the guy kept on coming. And raping you? No, he kept on coming to our place. So, and then, uh, I, and then he, all of a sudden he vanished. So when he vanished, I never knew where he had gone to. But remember we had more pastors, more padres that could come and pray for us. Mm -hmm. So they continued coming, continued coming. So when my sister gave birth, our dad at that time was, uh, he, had, he had another job. So he had money to take her to high school. So she went back and uh, she finished. She went up to uh, from one to and then she got somebody and she ran away. She got married. So we were left the five of us in the family. And now dad, uh, again, after two years, now he lost his job. When he lost his job is now things started turning upside down. So the torment continued. We were going through a lot of stuffs. We moved from where we were living and now we went to uh, this mud house. Uh, so at this, uh, at this time, we were going to a mud house. Nobody now is coming to, to pray for us or to see us. So they are like, they are fled. So they started saying that uh, this guy was really feeling, pretending to be a rich man. Now we shall see what his children will turn to. So my elder brother, they said he'll become a thief. Uh, the, me, they said I'll become a prostitute. The other one, so you are just kids and you don't know how to handle all this. Yeah, things are not working. So when you move to that uh, house, uh, the torment continued. Our mom... Uh, went away she left us because she could not take she could not take the shame the pain and uh the frustrations she we started lacking food we started uh lacking uh, our basic needs so she could not stand it and then my dad uh he got started cheat like cheating so like a spirit was uh, transferred in him. So he started cheating and like, so us, we did not know what was happening. So my mom, our mom knew. So at times we could see them fighting and we were wondering, okay, what, why is mommy fighting daddy? Because our dad looks very humble. So he could not understand until later on when we understood that uh, this is what was happening. So she went away. We did not know where, but I uh, understood she went to look for some small jobs somewhere. So we moved to that uh, mud house. People began calling us, uh, prophesying to us what we would become in future. So in this house, it was like uh, the owner of this house also had demons, plus the demons from the religion. We were being haunted. You wake up, it has not rained. The water is filled with... Uh, the house is filled with water. Oh. You wake up, my eyes are swollen. My mouth are swollen. Like one day my friend came to pick me when she, she was going to school. So she was passing by to pick me. And then she saw my eyes swollen and my mouth. <laughs> so she, she really ran away because she was not expecting to see me on that state. So uh, that, that, that morning, my dad again took me back to that guy at Karen. So he prayed. I got better. The following day, I started being beaten by each mites. So here, my brother is uh, on and off in school. My elder brother is on and off. When he's off school, he's, when he's sent away for school fees, He's somewhere doing those video. When uh, he finds, daddy finds something, he goes back to school. 
So here I am, me and my my younger brothers and the the younger ones. So we are still schooling. So when I wake up, I find myself alone, beaten by each mites. Each mites. Like yes, each mites. Insects. Yes, like they're those small that I I hear they cause scabies. I did okay. a research about them. They cause scabies. Scabies are those wounds that you really scratch. They are itchy. Right. Okay. Yeah, that is why they are called itch mites. They are so itchy, you scrub yourself until you you it becomes a wound. It's when it stops. So I developed wounds all over until uh, my friends could no longer play with me because I the wounds were were releasing okay. blood and uh how do you call it those yellow the discharge angusa, yes so uh it was really bad so growing up our dad at that time he was uh totally now totally jobless he could go to his friends who he was helping he was a really a generous person he was helping these friends when he was having a job but uh, now when it was his turn uh, in need, nobody could help him. So luckily he could go and find 20 shillings. He come and buys the small unga or uh, flour for ugali, maybe half. Then he cooks us lunch. So we are coming back for lunch. We find uh, him. We, he has cooked for us uh, ugali. Sometimes with porridge so you are eating ugali and porridge mm -hmm. and then you <laughs> go back to, to school <laughs> so at times you could stay at school and say i'm not going back to for lunch because even if i go back uh nothing is really there so the situation got worse uh he kept on uh going to this church and uh so many things used to happen so one time um uh, somebody because now our mom is away our mom is away anybody could take advantage and then the the relative the family friends one of them came and uh he noticed my mom is not around so we also used to go visit them he noticed my mom was not around so he came and uh he saw the bag i was carrying it was torn it was torn up it was not in good shape so he asked me that uh, on saturday he'll take me to get a bag at isili so i agreed i told my dad of course you know dad's uh they my dad was used to my mom taking care of us him he was a provider so he doesn't know much about protecting the child, especially the girl and everything. So he told me, ah, if he wants to go and buy you a bag, see, he's a family friend. Just go with him. So he went. I found us at Isili. We moved around. We moved around. I'm um, 13 years. We moved around. And then now it was around 6.30 and it started getting dark. So I told him. Uh, why are we moving and we are passing bags here and you're not buying me a bag? So the guy's plan was, he takes me there, it gets dark, he finds a place, we go sleep, he rapes me and then he returns me home. So I, we went and uh, he showed me a house from a distance and he told me, uh, now that uh, it's late, you see that house there? that house had no nobody was inside it it was like a flat it was a flat so he spotted one that uh, somebody had not gotten in so he said that you see that one that ha that house that window without lights it's my aunt's house so that is where we are going but it's like she has not yet come back from work so let's just move around when she comes we will go and spend there so i said okay so at around eight we are still moving around and he said uh, oh you see she has not come back so let me take her somewhere that we can sleep and uh, maybe wake up tomorrow in the morning i go get you a bag 
So I told him where are we going. So he said, "You just don't don't worry. Uh, I'm taking. Uh, we are going to my friends." So we went. Uh, we entered in uh, these single rooms, <coughs> full of men like this. Those those men that looks like bad men. And I told him, "I'm not going to get into this house. It's either you return me home." or ice cream i'm not going to get into this house so he saw the seriousness in me and then he told me he I, he entered the, that room and uh talked with those guys i think they organized how they're going to sleep so i think he requested that one house could be left for him and me so that we can sleep so when we go to that one house he told uh he asked me to come and join him with sleep I told him I'm not sleeping with you. Yeah, it's either you choose you sleep down, I sleep on the bed, or you sleep on the bed, I sleep down. So, um uh when he noticed I was serious, he he had to let me on the bed. So, we slept and in the morning he returned me home without a bag. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so later on after 3 months the guy passed on he died of hiv oh. so he wanted to get me sick so i thank god for that spirit that came in me and i came so strict and he returned me home safely so when my dad heard about it he wasn't happy and he went and attacked him he told him that he should never see him around before he died He told him that he should never see him around our home. So he went on uh, I vanished from home and then after 3 months we heard that he passed on. So it continued like that in this house we were so tormented we could hear uh, strange things happening like somebody walking on the roof the whole night uh like a woman crying with her baby uh just outside the house and nothing was working in that mad house we were going without food i remember my brothers going to pick rotten eggs from under the old car <laughs> under the old car that was abandoned <laughs> so they could go my brother maybe would get 20 shillings from the video he comes make ugali we are like scratching those <laughs> from the from the pot <laughs> so it was really bad and all because of these people who were coming instead of praying for blessing they were like cursing and then the altar the demonic altar that they had planted and then still my dad could not see because his daughter was saved from death so he knew you could not convince him otherwise so him he knew he was serving serving a true god and he has a very good godly heart because even if his friends hurt him he could not revenge he would tell you that revenge belongs to god he 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 could never do anything that would offend god but now the the brainwashing of this religion uh that that's what really captured him he could not live think of leaving this church so from there at least uh one time uh, i was still in class 8 so i'm about to do my kcpe again he sent me to to that that guy at karen to go and pray for me so i went he prayed and i could not understand anything like i got shut completely i hated maths and i used to do so well in maths i hated staying in class when i read the book like this i feel as if i'm becoming mad yeah so i could not i, I could not concentrate for long so i really struggled i struggled i struggled until i i finished my class 8 So when I finished we stayed here for quite some like 2 months 
and then dad got a, 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 a job somewhere and then we moved so when we moved uh, to the other side it wasn't much that he had so he could not take me to school so i could go to school at least i got some marks that would take me to school but i couldn't because uh, he had no money to take me to school at that time so we stayed we stayed in that it was now a uh, from a mud house to now a mabati iron sheet house from all over it's iron sheet so at least we were advanced uh, to that level so uh, that is when now he brought now this these people these other prayer people now from afar from a place called makongeni mm -hmm. it's i think it's in the eastlands yes uh, so he brought these people uh according to what i, I used to hear like they are they're, they're powerful so he could fetch powerful people yeah he used to fetch for powerful people to come and pray so he fetched them to come they gave him conditions for conducting the prayer um and they they instructed him on what to buy for the prayer so he did he purchased a black uh a piece of cloth um red candles and uh, anointing oil if i'm not wrong so he bought these things and of course a sacrifice for conducting the prayer because bring them all the way it's a, a sacrifice so he brought them they came uh this prayer this kind of prayer it is specifically done at during the night yeah it cannot be done during the day because it's a powerful prayer for reversing whatever the enemy has stolen so <laughs> they are reversing it so they must do it during the night so they they came they prepared their stuffs at exactly nine they go with time they pray at nine at 12 at three at uh yes so they started their prayer immediately at nine the prayer began pray they prayed they prayed it really took long so and then our dad was laid at the center of the house uh, of the sitting room it was a two-roomed house so he was laid laying at the center he was covered by this black 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 cloth like a dead person and then all around him were candles candles all over him I was looking at him and I was like, see, this is like a dead, dead person. Yeah, a dead person. Why are they conducting such a, 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 a mass to him? So I think that is when now the Holy Spirit began opening my eyes. So I looked at him and I was not pleased by what I was seeing. So they went on, they finished. That, that prayer alone took about two hours. Then they started now uh, pulling that that witchcraft that they believe had uh, bonded our dad. So they there's a way they they do like this. Then they say they are pulling it. So they pull it for like 30 minutes until you you think that the arm of the person doing that would break. He really uses a lot of strength to pull it until we saw something falling down from uh, at the at the middle of the where 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 our dad was lying so when it fell he took it and the our dad woke up and uh, we were shown he sh they showed us this is what was buried so that that is why your life is like this so by the time we were going to burn it it was exactly 12. so he went all of us as a family uh to burn it so at that time my mom had come because we had moved at least to a better house and then my dad had promised that he'll be fine so she came back 
of course, no woman would want to stay away from her children. So she came back. Uh, we conducted this prayer together. So she came also in honor of this uh, men, men of God. So we went outside at the middle of the night. We are burning this stuff. <clears throat> so what I was not comfortable with, it is the middle of the night. The whole neighborhood is asleep. You are burning stuffs outside. So your friends, perhaps your friend, my friends will see us doing that in the morning, you know. Uh, what would you tell them? So I was feeling very uncomfortable with this. So when we went back to the house, we were getting into the house backwardly, facing backward. Oh. So like everybody, the mother, the, the, the prayer people were a, a woman and a man. So the mom, the mother was the most powerful one. She begins getting in, followed by that guy they came along with, followed my dad, followed my mom, followed uh, my elder brother, Backward. according to the particular uh, order. So we we are all entering, facing backward, backwardly. <laughs> Walking oh, backwards. Uh, is... Yeah, so um, uh -huh. <laughs> it got me so <laughs> uncomfortable. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> was it a temple it's a church or it is a church it's a church yeah it's a church yeah yeah so many people believe in that church because they believe they perform miracles yeah so we were getting in backwardly so that is what got me totally off so i asked my dad no why are we entering the house facing back and he said ah Selin stops disturbing with me with many questions can't you see that we're in the mood of prayers i told him no dad how can we and get in the house facing backward i know it's devil worship worshipers that does this kind of uh prayers yes what kind of prayer is this and he told me so that the devil should cannot see our our faces <laughs> <laughs> so you can only see and what I asked him, <laughs> So are we supposed to face the devil? I I I think the Holy Spirit came into me and I was I became very strong. So I was asking him with a lot of boldness. So I asked him, Are we supposed to face the devil? Or we are supposed to fear him. And he told me, Ah, watch na mambo mingi, leave uh, stop uh, asking me many questions. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, know, that, means, <laughs> that means for our Western audiences, that means, yeah, yeah. just leave this issue alone. Yes. You know, don't ask me a bunch of questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, <laughs> I wasn't at peace. Of course, we went on and slept now at 12. So, everybody slept. Uh, we woke So, there was nothing uh, unusual at the church service. You just It seemed like a normal service or... During the service at the church. Yeah. Where well, you walked in backward. Um, okay. This particular prayer, that is how that prayer is conducted. Uh -huh. That is now a deep, a deep prayer. That if you are a normal church member in that church, you would, know, you would not know that such kind of prayer exists. Oh. Yeah. It's just like when you get deep into the devil worship is when you get to know the deeper secrets. Yes, of yeah, course. Of the how they worship the devil just like freemasonry yes, yes exactly yes. so when uh when uh that prayer was conducted is when i knew now what that religion is because before we used to just go and attend the service as normal the padre conducts the service he reads only one verse we sing those uh, uh, uh sacrament choruses and we are done we go pray it's it, uh, the strange thing during the their service now the main service the sunday service is uh once in a while they conduct they do something that they call being prayed for at the cross so you go and carry a cross like this and then somebody who is powerful he prays for you with the cross until you fall down so when you fall down i don't know it's like you are filled by the holy spirit i don't know so that is uh, the strange things that I saw taking place on Sunday, apart from the normal worship. So when morning came, uh, they had their breakfast, 
I went out. I said I would not finish these prayers. So I went out and I stood like this outside. So they called me. Selin, come we finish the prayers. And I said, no. I'm not getting in. I'm not finishing such kind of prayers. So our dad was so upset. And uh, the woman came outside. She told me, why are you rebelling? Huh? You don't even fear God. Come in and finish the prayers or else the devil will, will strike you outside there. And I told them, no, I'm not coming to finish such, such kind of prayers. And then the woman said, you know, you, you, you and life will not be good. Hmm? You're so rebellious. And I told them, you, you're not going to curse me. It is God who defines my future, not you. You don't have a power over my future. So I, she went back into the house. And they completed their prayers, and then they were escorted. After, I think, one year, I heard that they, they passed on. This, the, that woman and that uh, guy, <laughs> we call them Japolo, <laughs> meaning <laughs> a person from heaven, <laughs> a heavenly person. <laughs> <laughs> These Japolos are witches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, meaning a heavenly person. So Japolo died. <laughs> and mother. Oh, sorry, should ask somebody yeah. dying, but the name is funny. <laughs> yeah, so and, uh, the woman is Japolo. called mother. So they, I, I, I heard they all <laughs> passed away. I asked why, how, and uh, my dad could not tell me why, how, how they passed on. So... <laughs> Uh, that is it. That's what happened during that night. So from there, things became worse. <laughs> Remember, it was a prayer being conducted for a blessing. So we believe that whatever was bounding us had been destroyed because we even burnt it outside. So things got worse. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> things got worse. And now daddy lost his job completely like that year so our mom had to go and wash clothes for this time she did not want it to go she was tired of moving around so she used to go and wash clothes for people whatever she gets at 14 years i used to go work and bring money home <laughs> for food <Wow. laughs> so i could go and do hair <laughs> i get 50 bo i at high rise High rise, you know, high rise estate uh -huh. along Somewhere Kenyatta. In, in Nairobi. Yes, along yes. Kenyatta Hospital. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, my mom took me there to her friends. I got there. <laughs> I do help. I help them uh, finishing the braids, doing the twists, and then they could pay me fifty shillings. So that a uh, uh, ten bob is fair. Uh, ten, another 10 for coming back tomorrow then 30 shillings I could go with the skooma kills and tomato for so I, at least I was providing <laughs> at 14 yeah so uh, and then uh, my mom goes she does her also her small jobs and then she comes back whatever we get we it pushes us so things became worse uh completely that uh nothing was working so we we went on like that for quite a long time uh still being tormented now i met a friend a friend uh, a girlfriend who had schooled with my elder sister <clears throat> but her she had finished form four when i had finished class eight so she came, like God sent her. Immediately I rebelled against that church. God sent her to me. So she took me and she told me, uh, sometimes back her sister, who was my age mate, had taken me to PCEA. So I really loved what was going on there, comparing to what I normally experience at our church. Yeah. So I, at least I loved what was at PCEA. So, and then uh, years later, now her, her sister becomes my friend now, who is the age mate of my elder sister. So she took me, she took me to a church. Uh, 
that was nearby. Uh, it was New Life Church. She took me there. And uh, so I used to just love singing. I used to listen to a lot of secular. Because you are not uh, mentored. Even, you don't even know what gospel is actually. Right. Yeah, and I noticed that there are people out there who don't even know what gospel song is. So that is how I was. I did not know because the kind of songs you're singing in church, you don't know whether it's gospel or it's what. You're just singing things in Arabic, like what you used to sing in that church. It's right. a vernacular church, mm -hmm. but we sing those things in Arabic, like the ones they do at Catholic. So, so you don't know whether they are gospel or what they are. So I did not know even. Uh, they don't explain to you what you're saying. Yes, yes, they do. You were singing Arabic in a church. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Kiria, Kiria Liso. So you, what is that? If I tell you Kiria Liso, what is that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is what you used to sing. So uh, <laughs> the lady took me to New Life Church. And uh, I used to love secular Mariah Carey, Tony Braxton, Celine Dion, would sing. I noticed that I had a gift of singing when I was still in primary. Because I used to gather children, I teach them how to dance, uh, to sing and everything. So when now I, I finished class 8 now, I was listening to a lot of uh, secular because I had all the time. So when my friend took me to church um i had this lady who had also schooled with my sister my elder sister so she was the one uh leading praise and worship in church and uh when i first heard her singing i really loved it she was singing how excellent is your name oh god how excellent is your name wow. how excellent is your name how excellent is your name okay oh, so i really fell in love with that wow. and i said wow this girl sounds like mariah carey so you can sing this kind of songs in church singing them to god and i said wow okay so uh so I fell in love with church. She sang a couple of uh, these worship nice songs. So I was like, oh my, this is where I want to be. If I can sing this kind of songs in to church. God mm -hmm. in the church, then this is the right place. So I felt so good. Oh, so when I went back home, I, I told her how I felt. And she was like, oh, so we'll be going to church with you. Uh, and then I said, yes, you won't have problems with your parents going to the other church. I told them, no, I had already, I was done with that church. And I would like to speak to somebody out there. I normally hear, even at my place of work, uh, many people say that this is the church where I was born to. This is the church of my father. This is the church of my grandma used to fellowship here. So I cannot leave this church because my father was worshiping here you know it's not about where your father was if i did not come out of this church i could not deliver my family they would all still be in bondage and we would have buried like everyone wow. because coming out of this church is what delivered this family so it's not about and remember it is me who got them into this church it is me who got them out of this church yes yeah so never say that this is my parents church this is where i've grown no never say that because when you do that you are you are hurting you are hurting the blood of jesus that has died it's all about jesus it's not about it's not about the where where, where you are the church you were born to yeah so uh she took me to church i loved it and she said ah i'll be taking you uh even to to ladies conferences you know i when i finished class it my body grew big so i was looking big so in her she was this small size so we were matching so whenever i could put on home clothes i would 
look like her. So we would just go and enter even in a ladies conference in where and uh, I would be okay because I looked big. So I, that is when I started being uh, shaped uh, spiritually, learning this and that, knowing the difference between this and that, getting to know how God is worshipped, how, how to pray to him. So I really committed myself to, to church than her. I used to go for Kesha because her parents were also strict, so they could not allow her to go to to church to to for Kesha's. Yeah, yes. Kesha's are overnight prayer yes, services. So, so Mimi, uh, I used to go out of sometimes rebellion because I felt that there was something amiss in this in this in this family. There was something very big amiss. So I really wanted to get to know God and uh, how He operates. So I used to go for with Kesha's. I could go also. I'm also praying for my school fees. I don't have. Uh, I've not gone to school. I've not reported to school. I see my age mates coming from school in the evening. Times I stand by the roadside. I cry, and then I go back to the house. So, getting to get to know God really helped me because I started having fellowship in the house of God. So I could go at least uh, when people are praying inside. I could pray under the tree. Outside, I pray. I pray, I pray, I pray, crying out for my family, crying out for God to restore my dad, crying out for my siblings, because I noticed that things were not right here. So if I don't pray, this family is going to perish. So I used to pray even if I did not know how to pray that much. <clears throat> so uh, towards the end of that year, my dad got a job. So uh, he asked me, what I wanted. I told him, I asked whether he should take me to a, a salon course or uh, should go to back to school. I told him, you know, uh, in future I'll be meeting big people and I'll have to speak English. So if I drop at class 8, I won't be able to speak good English. So I told him, just take me back to, uh, to school. At least I finish form 4. So he took me back and I went and uh, in school, I got to, I got, I started from form two <laughs> and I did well at form two, form three, I became a school captain. And uh, so when I was now in high school, another level of attack. So I noticed that now the devil got deep into me now that I have invited another kingdom that opposes his kingdom he got to another level so I started getting attacked by very uh, big demons uh, when I wake up to study at night I then I go back to sleep you, you, you understand a case whereby you are just going back to bed. You have not yet even closed your eyes. And then you, already you are being strangled. Already you are seeing demons like in the whole house. My parents are sleeping in the bedroom. So my elder brother had his cube outside. So I'm left here in the sitting room alone. After I'm done with my studies, with, with my midnight studies, that is uh, towards when I'm, when I'm at form three, form four. I could see demons in the whole house. Like those two small, small, very busy, very busy. They look like aliens right. with big eyes. Some have wings, you know, they are coming. They are very busy. I don't know what they were doing. So, uh, you feel strangled, you cannot move. Then you really struggle until you you come back to your to your to yes, yourself. You, you feel sleep paralysis. Yes, 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 sleep paralysis. So um that went on for a very long time. So like every night when I wake up to sleep, until I I tell God, please don't let this happen. Still it comes. Still why? 
there is a demonic altar of course in the house yes so there is no way and then you are not that strong and then i was the one initiated to this altar mm. right. so like like i'm the altar so what am i telling them so um i could not help it you get strangled every so i was afraid of waking up to study because once i wake up to study that that was the norm <laughs> that you was could the see norm. them running around the house yes they are walking they are busy they are singing they are doing what all over so when morning comes i try to explain it to my my parents they don't understand they say maybe it's a dream but now my mom was sharp spiritually so with the prayers that with my little prayers that i normally do at the church so her eyes open also began opening my mom's eyes actually she was the first one to get delivered after me so her eyes began opening but she was my worst enemy when i got into now the real church i could come from from kesha she she takes that water that has washed utensils the ugali she pours them on me the water on me uh and i at times i'm just walking uh going to the bedroom she hits me one day i don't know whether it was the demon pushing her to do that one day she just hit me here until i saw stars <laughs> Oh. oh no. <laughs> I saw stars blinking oh. for like five minutes and I asked her, "Mommy, why did you beat hit me such <laughs> so hard?" She could not tell me why she she hit me. So, uh there are spirits uh, involved, of course. Yes, yes. So after some times, she also uh her eyes began opening. So when I tell her these things, she also could tell me the same. She also used to tell me that. By the way, Since these people started coming to my house it is when your dad lost his job it is when you you are schooling became unstable it is when i began leaving my home right it is when we began uh, we started living in uh, this kind of houses is when immorality came yes, in yes immorality came in right so it's like this religion they are bewitching my children yes So one day she woke up and she destroyed the rosaries. Yes. She went and burnt the candles. Yes. And she said from then she she was not going to to Go back. to do those prayers. To do those prayers and she doesn't want to see those people in church and she doesn't want to see them at home. <coughs> so uh while Now at that time now she used to do some business she used to hawk uh clothes So as she was walking one day along along on her way to Karen 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 Center at Mamba village along there She saw a spirit in front of her Remember when you get deep in this religion yeah when you live that religion yes. you must see a spirit you must i remember another family friend he tried living he found demons waiting at him in the house of course and they told him why <laughs> why why do you leave us because you better he's... get back to us or yes. we destroy you because so he was have broken the covenant yes. he's trying to break the covenant exactly. so th- so they'll bring the consequences for yes. that so he opted to to get back and when he got back everything didn't never worked for him but now he's bonded he has fear you know these people what i noticed they instill fear in you of course yeah so you live by fear you see in our house we could not walk freely because the dee was telling us the maria will slap you messia will slap you you know so you in the house and then you also had the spirit of fear like you in the house and you're feeling like you are two of you or like somebody's behind you or so i remember one incident when we went to visit uh, up country we weren't visiting much also because of witchcraft uh so one day we went and visited 
and I felt like somebody was behind me. So I was sent something in the house to get something from the house, house of Shosho, uh, grandma. So uh, as I was coming out, I felt something behind me. So I jumped, I jumped from the from inside the house to outside. So I did not notice that the roof was <laughs> was not high. Oh. So when I jumped, it brought me down. Then I fell and I broke this arm. Oh. As you can see, this this place here, it is swollen than oh. this one here. Yeah. So um, I broke my arm because of the spirit of fear and torment. Yes. So we, 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 we lived being tormented. You are not free. You are not, you're not happy. You are, you wake up with different incidents, you know. Of course, and fear hath torment. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, so um, our mom, she saw a spirit. And when she saw the spirit before her, in front of her, when she was walking, that is when she confirmed that this religion is not true. It's a cult. Yes, it's a cult. Yeah, because she came in. Actually, I think it's me she told. Because she had noticed that I was getting deep into prayers. And then her spirit could tell her. Now, our spirit began attracting. Yes, uh, becoming united with her. So she could come and confide in me. So she came and told me that uh, when I was walking, uh, I saw a spirit appearing and disappearing appearing before me and disappearing so when i was going to branch it stood and it looked at me and i heard a voice whispering to my ear now my mom is telling me that why did you leave this religion yeah so um that is when she noticed that uh it was not a good religion so when i was about to do my phone phone i went and uh daddy advised again that i should go and uh form for his high school exams for, yes that's like high, high school. school so he, she was yeah. about to sit for so, the high school exams yeah so yes he invited this guy to come and pray remember him he has he's still deep into it so when this guy came he conducted the prayer uh he shut my memory completely now i could wake up when i want to read Remember, I could wake up and read, but when I sleep, I see those demons. But now I could wake up, when I try to read, I feel like I'm becoming mad. I feel like I'm becoming mad. Like you're like, losing your mind. Yes, I'm losing my mind. Like my mind wants to blow up. And then I return the book and then I sleep. Then when I sleep, I get tormented again. Wow. So it was not good. It was not peaceful. Uh, so one day, I went on and I, I, I did my exams. When I was just uh, almost doing my exams, I lost my, my periods, just mysteriously. I waited for month one, month two, month three, they weren't coming. So I noticed it was, so before that happened, I had a dream. I had a dream that uh, now I was seeing New Life Church. I was walking in a cool pathway. I was alone. So walking in this, this cool paths that it's going somewhere, but it's very cool. There are no people. So I was walking alone. And then I saw a pickup coming. So as the pickup was coming, I... I stood and I looked at it and I noticed uh, the spirit told me that the people that are coming with this are not good people. So I started backing off. So as I began backing off, it came faster. And then it stood almost near me. Remember, I was now running backwardly. So the lady came out of that uh a lady came out of that Nissan very fast. She was wearing a bui bui. Bui bui are those Muslims clothes. Yeah, so she she was wearing that black and her, her hair was, her head was covered by a black kitamba. 
So she came. Yeah, Kitambaz means yes. like a like a cloth. Yes. So she she was dressed in a in a hijab. Yes. Like hijab. In a Muslim hijab to yes, cover this the Muslim whole body. Yes. Covering. Yes. So she came faster towards me, and then uh, I I could not run. I could not run faster than her. So I looked behind, and I saw my mom and dad seated at the door, at the doorsteps. And then I looked the right side, and I saw the New Life Church. So she's coming. She's still coming. I'm looking this side. I'm seeing mom and dad. I'm looking this side. I'm seeing the church. Then as she was moving closer, I said, now if I call mommy and daddy, before people come to rescue me, it would be late. But if I call Jesus, those people at the church, they'll come running to rescue me. So I immediately, when she was almost catching me, I said, Jesus. And like, I woke up everybody in the entire neighborhood shouting Jesus. So after that dream, uh, is when now I, I I I began losing my my menses, so I did my exams. Now I started now battling like the devil. The devil knows every steps of our lives. He knows now. She's done with her primary. She's now done with her uh, form four. Now the next thing is now she's going to another level of now getting married. Mm. So he knows how to take to do his skills. Yes. Yeah, anyway, because so he don't. yes he 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 assigns a demon. Yes. or a group of demons to every family yeah. when you're born. Just the same way even God assigns angels yes. when you are born. The enemy also assigns yeah. angels especially if there's witchcraft in the bloodline he has more access. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, that is when I began losing my menses. And now the kind of attacks and the kind of dreams were different. The kind of dreams that I used to dream and the attacks I used to get before I finished Form 4, totally different. Now I started dealing with marine spirits. I see myself in the ocean. I see a mountain of ocean i at that time i had not gone to mombasa so i did not i did not know how an ocean looks like so when i went now i saw what was standing before me <laughs> and then it is standing before me and it's raining on me so the ocean standing like a mountain and then it's raining on me and i'm somewhere down in the middle so i'm asking who will ever take me out of this place so I could see myself trying to climb uh, a mountain. When I'm reaching the top, going to the other side, a wind comes and blows me back to where I had started climbing. Uh, at times I see myself swimming. I'm unable to cross the other side. So now these were the kind of dreams now I was dreaming. Mm -hmm. I could see some spirits now coming and taking a child from me i see now i see i see now a child from my womb now being taken i see it i see it going with something flying you know so i now these are the kind of now spirits i was fighting with at that level <laughs> because they knew now the next thing is now getting getting a job and getting married or something so i fought this for this Sometimes I thought them. Until now, I, I, I got to know how to do prayers and fasting. So I started doing prayers and fasting. I started learning how to counterattack the enemy. I started learning how to denounce the curses. I started learning how to denounce demonic altars. You know, yes. so it was very difficult for us. Why? The altar is still with us. Yeah. So uh, parents who get into such altars, you are putting your, your, your children in a very difficult, you know, difficult situation. Because when they grow up, they don't even know where to start from. 
Yeah, like us, we do not know where to start from. You don't even know how to start calling upon the name of God. So if God did not deliver me from this, if God did not open my eyes to see this kind of religion, and maybe I would say that it's because of me that we got into this religion, we would, be, we would not be alive at this time. So please, if you're in this kind of religion, please get, get out immediately. Because you're initiating up to your fourth generation into yes. something that they'll be unable to get out from. Yes. Yeah, so this is what uh, we were gotten into. And you see, our dad is still very innocent. And then out of fear, because we wouldn't blame him so much. I used to be so, be so bitter with him. And I had to forgive him. Why? I came to realize it wasn't him. He was overpowered by these spirits because even from the village, being the only son, the dad left him a very big shamba land. So he doesn't, and then he was bewitched that he should never go back. He should, be, he should die in town without going back to his land so that other people may inherit. So when I came to learn all this, I, had, I forgave him because at times... Demonic powers can become too much. They, they can become so overwhelming that you don't know. If you don't know the true God, you would not know how to, to attack or to handle them. Yeah, so um, I, uh, the, the journey wasn't easy. Getting, uh, so my, my dad at that time, he took me to a college, my aunt's college. Because she was an aunt, he was able to pay him. Not so much. So when I went there, he agreed that uh, we agreed that I was going to do secretarial. So after I finished my secretarial course, my aunt refused to give me a certificate for secretarial instead he gave me a certificate for computer packages so i was so disappointed so by that time we also daddy was working now and remember that spirit of immorality yes. could not allow him to pay rent this one got bad because our mom found herself washing clothes to to my dad's concubine <laughs> yeah so she they used to work together so my mom also was a cook there so when she left the job uh, at Karen she left the job and uh, they were retrenched at that time during that season so Kumbe Daddy is pumping money on the concubine so she has to go seek for job for washing clothes at her so when she came to learn that she so, said she was she she's leaving now for good because she could not take it yeah that was too hard um so we also now we were now grown-ups now we, we we could understand what was happening now yeah so we then uh we learned so many things that were happening uh when we 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 did not know how to handle them but now since we were grown-ups we knew even how to talk to daddy, but mom had uh, decided now to move completely that, and she said she would never come back. So at, again, now somebody took my elder brother, a friend to my dad, uh, because of it's something that you always do. One good thing that God will never forget. See, my dad never revenged even when his friends uh, went against him to make him become sacked he never revenged on them so somebody just appeared one day and uh, took my elder bro and he went and uh, trained him at rti so he got trained there and then immediately started working so he could make some money at least now he got better now that is when now he bought these stuffs these household stuffs the the normal staffs for the households. So my mom has already left. 
so when she bought, he bought this uh now daddy wasn't paying rent due to what i've explained so one day we come back i come back from my my hustle we find the house empty <laughs> oh no the house is empty <laughs> and we are like oh are we moving no what happened the auctioneers why how <laughs> at the, so when i went and approached one because he was we used to minister in the same church uh he told me the rent has not been paid <laughs> for quite some times yeah so everybody was everything was swept away and then back to zero <laughs> Yeah so uh it uh, that was another uh another torment by itself it was so bad you want to run away you don't know where to run to uh the 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 pain it was the shame it was too much and then he gets another job <laughs> and then uh we moved uh, god remembered us then we moved from this place now we went to a three bedroomed house the spirit again came back so again instead of uh, paying the rent on the other side and he could pay now um the situation got worse that now there was no food in the house so you take this uh, table go sell it buy food for the whole week next time there's nothing something else to sell we go for the chair go sell it until again everything was done so we became homeless <laughs> so now we became homeless <laughs> yeah it's okay <laughs> yeah so uh, uh luckily there's a friend of mine now i was fully ministering as a prison worship Uh, despite all this i had uh, i read a word in the bible at that time it is uh, romans 8 from verse 35 that uh, what shall separate us from the love of god so i did not know that i had covenanted myself with that word so i said that god since i have known you nothing shall separate me from your love be it hardship be it peril be it persecution nothing shall ever separate me from your word so i did not know that i've knocked the door the door of the tests whether i will remain in god or the persecutions will get me over plus the altars that i don't know how to go about them but i thank god for his word so uh we became homeless i was faithfully serving in the church i was doing my best to be smart i was doing my best to be the first one in church so nothing should stop us from serving god i'm talking to a minister out there nothing no situation should stop you from serving god i used to serve faithfully and when i go and sing people are getting blessed until after church everybody is like eh hey, you girl you sing so well you sing so well and they don't know that i'm going without food they don't know that in the morning i came without tea they don't know that i don't have a place to stay when i'm coming from church but i'm very smart <laughs> very smart and i sing so powerfully <laughs> that everybody admired me but they did not know what they admired a homeless girl a girl who goes without food and everything but i thanked god <laughs> for everything and uh, and then uh men of god please take care of the people you work with yeah take care of the those uh call them for a meeting uh, ask them whether they are they're having food whether they are having jobs because uh mostly those people who are working in the forefront in the church are the young people so some have just graduated from colleges some are still looking for jobs some have not yet even gone to there but you find them they are very faithful 
a very faithful keyboardist, a very faithful cameraman, a very faithful uh, drumist, but you don't know, a very faithful singer. They are coming, yes, they are singing so well. Do you know where they are going after the service? Do you know maybe you are, you are keyboardist after the service is living with an old woman because he wants food. And then when you hear them, when you hear that they have uh, fallen or they, they, they have done something or a scandal, you are the first one to condemn them. Please take care of these people that are working hand in hand with you on the pulpit. Yeah, so um, that is what I was going through. There were people who were, who were it was a, a big church, I won't mention. It was a big church funded by outside people they noticed the grace that was upon me actually they were whites so they used to come and tell me Celine you are the one leading yes when they're having visitors you're the one leading yes but now the wrong people are the one being taken care of the right people are the ones not being taken care of so you who is genuinely there to serve God genuinely nobody even comes to tell you how how is your life where do you stay word but the people who are joking you find them sleeping around in the clubs and in on sunday they are there because they are paid now they are the ones <laughs> being taken care of so but i i came to understand that maybe god wanted me to learn the hard way to serve him faithfully without expecting nothing yeah, so I served faithfully. So until then, nothing ever stopped me from serving God because the worst situations never stopped me from serving God. So nothing, no situation should stop us from, from serving God. Yeah, so I served and uh, this was a big church. Luckily, there's a friend whom we were singing with. She had come for a home fellowship at our place. So she, we had known each other. She was older to me, uh, 10 years older. So she was like my big sister. So when uh, the next time I'm sharing with her my story, I'm telling her that I'm, I'm homeless. She, has just, she had just come to a three-bedroom house and now I'm homeless. And uh, she cried with me. I remember her giving me a shoulder to lean on. She told me, Celine, just lean here and cry, cry. And I cried and I finished crying. And she wiped my tears. And she told me, don't worry. So um, she was jobless. But she had a house. So she took me in. So you know, my brothers, I don't know where they're, they're going. But me, at least I, I found somewhere to go. So uh, she took me in to her sister's place. So the house is hers, but now she did not have uh, much authority because she was jobless. And, the, and uh, it was her sisters who were providing and uh, paying for rent, though she was the older sister to them. But now since she wasn't providing, the sisters had more authority than her. And then she was this low self-esteem girl that went through some challenges that made her uh, low. So she took me in despite her sisters not wanting me in. Uh, it became worse until they called their mother from Moranga to come and handle this case. So when the mom came, she told her, Mommy, this girl, she's homeless and she's my friend. So what do you expect me to do? Do you want me to send her away? The mother just asked her sisters to let me stay. So she was uh, jobless. So we stayed there, though not comfortable. Then we decided to do a prayer and fasting. So we did a prayer and fasting with her for three days. And then immediately we went back home. We were somewhere. So immediately we went back home. God gave her a job. So she got a job at least in a hardware somewhere. At her longtime friend. At his, yes, where his, the friend had a hardware. So she got a job there. At least now she had something. Another miracle. 
So we were still, you know, the sisters, they never like, liked me to stay with them. So God made a way. A friend who was staying in a nice house, a bed sitter, fully furnished, she was getting married. So she did not know whom to leave her, th her stuffs with, her household and her house with. So she was getting married and moving to a far place. So she, had not, she was not prepared to transfer her things to wherever she was going to. So she called this my friend. And she asked her, can you uh, uh, keep for me my house? Can you like oh, come and occupy my house? Um, I'm getting married, but I don't know whom to live with the house. I was like, what? So you can just come and see the house and see whether you'd be comfortable in it. She got the house fully furnished. And the following day, we moved into a house full of everything. Wow. So I was an angel that led her to, God used me as an angel to her life. Wow. Because she took me in, God made a way for her. For her. Yes. And where she went to, with me to reside, the owner of the, the flat was her longtime friend. Wow. They had known each other. Actually, she had put her hardware there. Then the boyfriend who had uh, helped her open up her hardware went to US and went for good. So the hardware closed down. So this guy, the, the landlord asked her, uh, how comes you're here? What happened to the hardware? And uh, she told him the challenges. And he said, and now what are you doing uh, for a living? And she said, I'm at your friend's hardware there. And uh, how much is he paying you? And she said, so he said, uh, at uh, this place, we are hiring people next year. How old are you? Her age was quite advanced, but they wanted uh, ladies from around age 23 to 25. But her, she was 28 at that time. <clears throat> so um, the guy told her, just try, just apply, because I'll be one of the panelists. Just try your luck. Just come with your papers. She had done accounts. So, we have moved. God has opened the door. Then where she was moving with me, she meets another miracle. Come January, she gets a job. Paying over 30K. And that was a miracle. Wow. Now, through her, I also got a secretarial job. Wow. That brought me to Mombasa. So through me going there, she got a job and uh, she had been disappointed with boyfriends, good potential men. So now when he, she's coming from work, she meets this guy who was to whom, whom they were fellowshipping with a long time. And the guy propose, proposes and they get married and now they're in the U.S. for over 10 years now. Wow. Yeah, so you see how God channels his blessing. Yes. So you might accommodate someone and Kumbe, you are accommodating your angel that is taking you to the next level. Yeah. yeah. yeah so we should never despise people uh, despite the situation that they are, they are going through. So if this girl could not take me in, she could not move to that lady's house. She could not meet the landlord. The landlord would not connect her. She would not meet her husband. She would not be in the U.S. Yes. Yeah. You see how God plans his mm. also. Yeah. So the devil can, uh, can, uh, can plan. The devil doesn't have power over your future. Nothing from the devil is permanent. It is only God who holds permanent keys. Yeah. So that is what I learned that uh, he only comes to frustrate us. Yeah, but he doesn't have the power over our future. So my friend uh, got me a job. She just asked me, Selene, you had told me you, 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 you did secretarial, right? Because she had never seen me with certificates. <laughs> <laughs> so I told her, yes, I did secretarial. So you, you can do office work. I told her, yes. <laughs> 
Okay, there is uh, my friend is asking for secretaries at Westlands. So can you go there for an interview? And I said, yes, give me the location. So I went confidently without the certificates. And uh, I only presented my living uh, certificates and the computer package one. <laughs> the one I was rewarded with. Yeah. So I went and I, I the boss actually, <laughs> he asked me, um, you are Celine? I was referred to you by a friend. I was recommended to you by a friend. So... Um, where are your certificates? And I told him uh, they had burnt during post-election violence in yeah. 2007. <laughs> so he said, really? He just smiled. And uh, so, uh, can you type? And I told him, yes. So he gave me a CV. I typed. We were supposed to type for 15 minutes. I typed it for 12 minutes. And uh, we were two. We were two ladies doing an interview. So uh, the other lady was called immediately. So me, I was like, I thought I was, I maybe maybe I failed the interview. So I went home. Uh, I was never called week one, week two, month one, month two. I now started hustling, uh, doing hair, going back to Karen where my dad used to work to seek for a chance to do hair there. I used to do hair there immediately, I finished form four. So I went back and I found that he got frustrated and he closed down the salon. He was an MP. So I, I, so they only offered me a waitress job. <laughs> so a waitress job, I am serving God on Sunday yes. in praise and worship. So I, actually they told me to report the following day, <clears throat> which was Sunday with the black and white. So I went talking to myself. Now, Mimi, Celine, I should now put on black and white. Tomorrow I'll be serving uh, this politician's uh, beer. Mm -hmm. And I'm supposed to be serving in church. church. No, I will not go. So I, I did not go. So I passed by somewhere at a friend's place. She had a church. And I found a lady praying in the spirit. And when we immediately we entered, I was with a friend. She said, the Holy Spirit in her said, God has answered your prayer. Just go home. And I said to my, my friend was telling me, uh, Selene, you know, it's us who the lady is speaking. And I told her, no, not me. So she said, yes, it's us. Just take that word. <laughs> it said me, said me, no. <laughs> so we went home. Uh, after two weeks, I get a call. Are you Celine? Yes. Had you come for an interview at Westlands? Yes. Uh, congratulations. Report to work tomorrow. But now you'll not be working in Nairobi. You'll be working in Mombasa. So that is how I ended up in Mombasa. Wow. Yeah. And talking about Mombasa, <laughs> yes. tell me some of, of the, you know, you, she, she was sharing with me the amount of spiritual warfare yeah. in Mombasa. Yes. Yeah. yeah how so, is it there? Um, Mombasa, uh, Mombasa, when you get into Mombasa, they say Mombasa Raha. Mm. Yani Mombasa is fun. <laughs> they call it Mombasa fun. Mm. Yeah, actually, uh, there's a lot of fun physically. Yes. Yeah, but uh, when you get spiritually, there's no fun. Mm -hmm. And also, people seem friendly. But they are friends that are killing you or, e or eating you up. <laughs> Same as in Uganda and yes. Nigeria. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. so humble, so friendly. Yes. I'm not saying that all Ugandans yes, are not bad. All. Yes. Yeah, but they the, kill you the, softly. The, yes. Yeah, they kill <laughs> you softly. <laughs> <laughs> the person who bewitches you, you never expect. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, people are so friendly. Hey, welcome, welcome. This is Mombasa. Actually, you cannot pass a place like here in Nairobi. You're minding your business. You must say hi. Yeah, you find some women sitting there. Just say hi. If you don't say hi, that is uh, you're like proud. Yes, you're proud. You Same arrogant. as Uganda. You have oh. to say hello to everybody. Okay. The culture. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the culture too in Mombasa. But you cannot do business if you don't have God or which doctor. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, 
put up a ministry if you are not spiritually strong. Yeah. So you cannot build in Mombasa without a godly foundation or a witchcraft foundation. Right. Yeah, it is it is it is a pair. It's either, either or. It's, yeah. <laughs> either light or darkness. And the truth is that's how it yes. is anywhere but yes. it, now it's more pronounced yes. in Mombasa because yes. of course Mombasa is an island. It is. 70% Muslim. Yeah. So and it's been like that for hundreds of years. Yeah. So it's old. It's a very old yeah. town. Mm, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember mm-hmm. what what uh, our, our friend he's born again but he's he's a uh, he deals in in car businesses <coughs> so he was telling team if if I make a sale and I don't split uh, mm-hmm. my profits with my friends I will not sell any yes. car in this car yeah, you, <laughs> you remember yeah, yeah. yeah. what were yeah. you about to say um even uh putting up even a uh, tuk tuk yeah. on the road you must do something to it because i've seen it even even a, a matatu yeah you are the owner of the matatu you would not drive it peacefully <laughs> okay uh you put up a business you will, the first day you'll get a lot of clients the second day the third day the fourth day now they start uh producing you you start, yeah they start maybe somebody comes with the money that is that has been uh, uh, that some rituals have been performed in, in the money and then they bring it to your shop when you mix it with the money you are normal money you you find that all the money has been carried away yes by the spirits so it is a place whereby you see cows moving without the shepherd the goats moving cows walking along the beach and you know people take it normal but these things are not normal. It needs if you are a pastor in Mombasa you have to be a very strong pastor because you would you you would run a church for one or two or three years successfully but the fourth year fifth it would it won't be easy. Yeah, yeah. So um, maybe many pastors who will hear this testimony can testify testify about that it is not easy running a church because me have been have ministered to Mombasa churches uh, quite a number of them and uh, I know it's not easy what uh, men of god go through there so it's either you compromise or you get back to your calling is when you will survive but if you will not get back to your calling you just be deceiving people yeah you have people the congregation you want to maintain the congregation but not with okay. the real purpose the original purpose of your calling it is not easy like they say getting in is easy and coming out is uh is uh you come out in a coffin or dead you wow. know these things are very spiritual life is mm-hmm. spiritual yeah. when they say uh kuingia ni harusi getting in is a wedding coming out is a funeral that is how they say wow. it is spiritual yes. but people don't know they just yeah. go yes mombasa raha yes wingi arusi toka matanga and they don't know the who, who came up with that slogan of course yeah what was his agenda what was in his mind when he was putting that slogan wingi arusi kutoka matanga coming in is a, a wedding Uh, coming, coming out, out is, is a, a funeral. funeral so many marriages are dying many youths actually when you go to like every 50 meters they call it mugokabes those mira how do you call oh, mira oh yes yes In, uh, you know i don't even know the english name for that thing but <laughs> yeah, it's those, it's a leaf that you chew leaves, but it is yeah. it is considered a class a yes. drug it's like cocaine yes. but okay of course less lethal Yeah. Mm. But it's a it's a leaf that you chew mm. and it makes people high. Yeah. And they can sit for hours. Yeah, yeah. Chewing that thing all day mm. every day. Yeah. If they get addicted. So every 50 meter there is a mugokabes. Such young guys. Even uh, you find a man and his wife chewing that 
So like this young hard working guys here. You find them in those bases. So you don't know when when they are working. You don't know when they are going to get married. You don't know when they are going to become responsible of their lives. So there's a very high rate of uh, of uh, Poverty, addiction, addiction yeah. poverty, poverty, immorality, uh, this small, small robbery. Yeah, so it is really uh, an altar. Mombasa itself is an altar. A very, yeah, it's, I think it's dominated by marine. Yeah, the marine yes. kingdom. The marine well, it's kingdom. an island. It's it an is, island, yeah. yes, yeah. in the Indian Ocean, so you can yeah. imagine. Yeah, so if you are not, yeah, people perform rituals at the ocean. Yeah, there's a place called Mamangina. So you know, many people go there for fun. But when you're spiritual, they call it Mamangina. Yes. What's Which the is, meaning of Mamangina? Now Mamangina, Mamangina. is the name of the f Kenya's first first, first, first lady. lady. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the wife of the first president Jomo Kenyatta. So yes. Her name is Mamangina. Yeah. <laughs> Gina was her daughter. So Mamangina. Yeah. Yeah, and that name is named that place is named after yeah. her. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so in that place it's um it's like a picnic place mm. for <laughs> for all people uh -huh. but so many rituals are being performed there at the ocean so many rituals when you go there at night you'll see indian throwing coins at the ocean some of them are throwing they are doing they're performing so many rituals. Rituals, of course. Yes. So, uh, if you don't go there spiritually, you just... Everything is being stolen from you, but you don't know. Your marriage is being stolen, your wealth, your everything. It's not a good place to yeah. stay in if you are not alert spiritually. Because those people, whatever they do, they do it spiritually. Because you can imagine... Um, Cows walking without a shepherd. You can imagine a goat crossing the ferry without nobody to take care of it. You can imagine a cow walking along the beach. So, you know, a cow is, is supposed to be a cow. It doesn't know the water and the dry land. or the. So when you release it, it should run straight to the water because it doesn't know whether that is water. But this one just walks along the beach and it goes back home. <laughs> yeah so these are the monitoring spirits that are taking people's blessing while they're walking but people don't know people are just ignorant and they think life is just about they're having you know, fun having fun and everything yeah so it's a it's a very strong altar if you if you are if you see things spiritually it's a very strong you cannot just wake up and just go to your place of work. Yeah, it, yeah. it's not only in Kenya mm. uh, or, or in Mombasa, but even mm. here in Kenya, a lady posted her baby bump and mm. somebody commented, went to the comment section mm. and said, I, I swear you will not come out of the labor room alive. And she died yeah. after, yes, giving birth. Yeah. In Uganda, when you post uh, a couple, yes. they say it will end in tears. Oh. It's like they just start speaking. Uh, negatively yes. so people are not happy when they see yeah. somebody mo or sure. progressing especially if they are not in christ yeah it's only people who have embraced jesus even yeah. some people in church you know a parent goes testifying about how their children are performing well mm. and they're testifying in church and they think mm -hmm. that people are celebrating yes, not yes, everyone yes. in church is happy yes some yes. people are saying we'll see Yes. If, if if she will give you anything, we'll sure, see if sure. if her knowledge will take her anywhere. Yeah. And they start fighting the innocent child. Yeah. So we have to be sensitive and aware yeah. and, and also to be cautious about the mm -hmm. kind of information we put out. Yes. People put out everything, their success, they put mm -hmm. out their plans, they put out their visions, everything on social media. Mm -hmm. They think people are happy for us. We, we, it's mm -hmm. better you keep a low profile. You don't yes. show people that anything you're even thinking about anything yes, it's yes. whether they just look at you the way they see you yeah sure. yeah right. mm -hmm. yes you know i i i saw several things in your testimony that can really help a lot of people mm -hmm. um god's word gives us a very clear instruction 
in Exodus chapter 20. The Bible says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, mm -hmm. or Yahuwah, your Elohim, yeah. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. And then he gives very clear instructions. But these instructions are always disobeyed, especially yeah. by his people. Yeah. And so it's very frustrating for God. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a direct instruction. He says, verse 4, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them for I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation mm. of them that hate me. So, if he has said, you shall not make unto you any graven image, it just reminded me of the altar you were talking to me, yeah. you were telling us yeah. about. Yeah. And upon the altar, there's a picture of a Jesus, yes. a European man with white hair, yeah. or, or blonde hair, and then there is uh, there are candles. Yeah. And then there is the a picture of, uh, there's rosaries. Yeah. And then there's a picture of Maria, or yeah. Ma Mary, yeah. mother of Jesus. The black Maria. The, uh -huh. And then uh, the, this gentleman, the, the yes. bl black Messi or whatever. He's even gentle. Yeah, he's not even a gentleman. <laughs> That's a false prophet. But you yeah. see, but you see now this is, and this is where the enemy uh, takes advantage because the word of God is a, is a boundary. The commandment of God is a boundary. If you step over that boundary, you are in the devil's department. You're in this. You're in Satan's domain, and he can do whatever he wants to in his house. If you step out of the Scripture, says the law of God is a commandment. He said, "He that breaks a hedge, a serpent will bite him." That's what the Bible says. So, the graven image or the likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Where is Yeshua? Where is Jesus? He's in heaven above. So, if you have an image of Jesus. What have you done? You have just broken Exodus chapter 20 verse 4. And by breaking Exodus 20 verse 4, you are in Satan's domain. But many people don't know that and they see this image and they think that's Jesus. First of all, Jesus is not a European. Not that I even, not that, you know, it should even matter whether he's black, white, yellow, brown or any of that nonsense because every race on earth has access to God through Jesus, through Yeshua. But any image any image of anything or any likeness of anything, any graven image, that means a sculpture, that means a statue, that means an image or a picture that is considered spiritual. You have violated the law of God. And in so doing, and how many houses out there have an image? People, and, 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 and this is religion. And religion has held the nations in bondage for thousands of years they have put a picture of jesus there and they think that they're being loyal to jesus but they're violating his commandment he is the one who said yahuwah almighty god he said and god spake all these words saying so it is the lord god himself who has spoken these words and he says i am the lord i change not so just because we're in the new testament does not mean that we go back and violate his laws he said no graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You'd be surprised how many people have images of mermaids, maybe on the wall, or maybe in, in the house somewhere, just, just a statue or something. You'd be amazed how many people have altars in their house. They have a picture of Mary and they bow before Mary or maybe a small statue of a Mary there. And they're bowing before Mary and they're praying. Furthermore, if you have candles, you're lighting candles in order to pray. You're not communicating with God in heaven. You are communicating with spirits. Yeah, and my, those spirits will accommodate you. My grandmother also, she had a rosary. She had that same image. A drone. <laughs> yeah, she had. She, a witch. <laughs> this, yeah, this, she this, was a sorcerer. Yeah. And then the other thing I noticed about her. Even if she did not like anybody, she was always smiling. So I've learned not to trust 
uh, every smile every smiling face yeah because she would be like oh who is that uh, she can even say something bad about somebody when they are walking towards her then when they come she puts on a smile oh hi how are you like she's so concerned and then they start saying their plans oh, I'm, i'm at university i'm graduating uh, you know on, on such and such a day i'll i'll send you an invitation and they think she's happy yet she's not happy yeah then it's that information that they would give her that she would use again to destroy that person's life mm-hmm. and then they come to her crying thinking that she's going to sympathize with them so um mm-hmm. it's very important that we learn what information we should put out sure. and what information we should keep to ourselves and also this kind of um reli- how religion binds us it mm-hmm. makes us believe in in a like in our ability to save ourselves because they believe that they can work for their righteousness and for their their salvation they can save themselves through their works and they believe that because we pray these times a day we are we are yeah. holy we are yes. even more holy than those who don't uh, like those who pray once a day mm-hmm. yeah so what religion does it binds it doesn't change somebody but it binds somebody and a person stays in there because of fear mm-hmm. yeah they also know how to use fear to keep you there they tell you if you get out this and this will happen to you yes, or yes. you'll have violated this and this this is the consequence yeah. to keep you there but the bible says that where the spirit of god is there is freedom so if you find yourself in a place where you're not free to worship god you're not free you know uh just know that that's not a place for you yeah yeah yes yeah, so in matthew chapter 4 verse 4 the bible says man shall not live by bread alone mm-hmm. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god so you know many people are asking how are we supposed to live how are we supposed mm-hmm. to survive mm-hmm. and people are already in desperate situations mm-hmm. by the time a person is already desperate it's difficult to tell him to start farming because he has to wait for the harvest yeah. which is months later Yeah. But it is better for you if you start learning God's word early. If you need anything from God, first and foremost, learn his word. Learn his word. That's what God mm-hmm. has commanded. Man shall live by every word right. that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And who was saying it? Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeshua was saying it in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. He was saying that man shall live by every word and he was quoting the Old Testament, Deuteronomy. So If you do not learn God's word, if you are not learning God's word, that means you are going to live by the systems of this world. And the systems of this world are merciless. They will force you, they will compel you into witchcraft. Her dad was involved in witchcraft, he didn't even know it. Yeah. Why? Desperate situations yeah. will pull you into witchcraft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You will be pulled and especially if you are a somewhat religious person, You have a mind toward God but you don't know how to approach him and that's very dangerous having a desire to serve God but without knowledge that is very dangerous so do not be this person who desires to serve God who desires to be used by God but you do not have knowledge of God's word you're in a dangerous situation and Satan can manipulate you make you religious and you'll find yourself in covenants having terrible nightmares yeah. because those are just an indication remember job chapter 30 god speaks once twice yet man does not perceive it he gives him dreams he gives him visions while he's sleeping to reveal to him what is happening in his life mm-hmm. and people are having all kinds of dreams that are just an indication mm-hmm. of what is taking place spiritually so that you can wake up and deal with them by his word Many people pray but they don't know what to pray. You yeah. don't just pray anything, you pray the word of God. Mm-hmm. When you're speaking to a demon, you are casting that demon out. You do so in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, but you speak the word to that spirit. You don't just speak anything to that spirit. You speak God's word because they respond to the word of God. Your situation will also respond to the word of God. Your circumstances will also respond to the word of God. But if you do not know God's word, how can you declare it? Yeah. How could you say it? He told you man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And in Joshua 1:8 
he, t he teaches every human being how they're supposed to live. This book of the law, meaning this word of God, mm -hmm. shall not stop coming out of your mouth, mm -hmm. but you shall meditate therein day, day and, and night. night. So that means that every believer out there should have a time where they are just meditating in the scriptures. Mm. For at least an hour when you wake up early in the morning, if you have to wake up at 7, get up even earlier at 6. Why are you doing that? So you can spend time in the scriptures to give your spirit man the right content that can produce a life for you. Mm. If you're not living by God's word, mm. meditating in his word, literally memorizing his scriptures and saying them and declaring them over your life in the place of prayer. If you're not living like that, that means that you're living by the systems of this world. Yeah, you're living sure. by luck, maybe by connections, but your connections will run out eventually. And when spirits come to blow your house down, <laughs> Yeshua said, whosoever will live by these words of mine, I'll compare that man to a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the storms of life came and witches passed by and tried to bewitch him. And his family members tried to go to the shrine and bewitch. And people tried to invite him to a wrong church to, <laughs> to covenant him and blah, blah, blah. The storms and the winds of change come yes. over time. He said, but because he had built his house upon a rock, meaning that he's built his life on God's word. Yeah. Meditating therein day and night right. until he has... His, his spirit man is so filled with God's word that it has begun to produce a life for him. Because those things you're meditating on will produce a life for you. But the problem with being born in poverty is that you see poverty every day and then poverty becomes your meditation. And so now the cycle of meditation on poverty becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Your life begins to produce what you've been seeing every day. It'll never produce anything different from what you feed it. Your life will only produce what you feed it. It is impossible for a man to ascend higher than the level of his meditation. If a man is meditating in God's word day and night, God's word will begin to produce a life for that man. But if he does not live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, what's going to happen? He's going to live as a victim, as a, as a victim of circumstances. And the circumstances usually are not preferable. The circumstances of this world are built on sorcery, yes. witchcraft, altars of darkness. The whole earth is covered in darkness. Yeah. So the man who lives by God's word is a man who is spiritually alert. He knows there's no way you can make it in this world without God's word. Yeshua told you, man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth what was her dad not doing he was not meditating therein day and night he was not becoming enlightened concerning what god's word says about his life about his situation he was not applying the word of god to his situation and he was disobeying a direct commandment yes. that you shall not bow before any other god yeah. before you will not have any other image, image. maria you're yeah. having rosaries sure. you're counting those those are the those are the items that pertain to witchcraft that is strong witchcraft Rosaries are contact points for devils. Mm -hmm. That is strong witchcraft. That Maria that they're praying to, that's the queen of heaven that yeah. is described in Jeremiah. Sure. They've been worshiping the queen of heaven for years. Mm -hmm. Those are the same Babylonian goddess. And it's, it's amazing. Anywhere you go in the world, you find this same cult, mm -hmm. the same arrangement. They have a false god. Then they have a false son of God. And they have a Maria there. They have some lady there. As like Semiramis in Babylon. In Egypt, she was Isis. And now in Rome, because they're imitating the church, they have Mary. And that rosary is what you're supposed to pray every time, every bead is a prayer. So you're supposed to repeat it over and over and over again. What are you doing? You're indoctrinating yourself with false doctrine. He said, man shall not live by every by, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So if you're not filling your heart and your mind with God's word, you are a victim of circumstance. I guarantee it. I know it. If you do not live by God's word, you are a victim of circumstances. And you're going somewhere looking for someone to pray for you because you're looking for a shortcut instead of looking for God's word. Sure. Instead of filling your heart and mind and doing what he commanded, 
Meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous. You see, he has already given a prescription for how you will make your way prosperous. Yes. But if you come into desperation mm -hmm. and you just want a, you just want a miracle. You don't want to do what he said. Mm -hmm. You want a miracle. So Satan will give you, he will make a, a prophet available for you who can give you a quick miracle. Meanwhile, sure. you're covenanting yourself into more darkness. Yeah. He'll give you a solution here, but a problem there. He'll feed you with one hand and stab you with the other. Mm -hmm. Man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So if you're not meditating in God's word every day, you intend to live life as a victim of circumstance. Yeah. You're not building your life on a solid foundation. You are building your life on whatever might happen in government, whatever might happen in the economy, hoping for the best. But usually things don't work out like that. Life is spiritual. Yeah. There are spiritual forces involved. Mm. So by declaring, by learning God's word, meditating on it and declaring it, you are releasing the power of God into your life. Mm -hmm. And if God's word is powerful enough to create the whole world, then God's word is also powerful enough to create your world. So if you're a guy or a lady out there who does not have any time you're for meditating in God's word, you're one of those guys looking for miracles. And mm -hmm. Satan will give you miracles. Yeah. He's yeah. got plenty of miracles. He's got churches out there and false prophets who will give yeah. you miracles and they will abuse you. They will find ways. You'll find yourself losing your mind. You find yourself losing consciousness. By the time you come to, you're naked. Mm -hmm. You don't know what this guy has done to you. You don't know what this false prophet has done to you. Those false prophets, they survive off the stars of innocent people. Sure. And how do they get yeah. your star? They sleep with you. Mm. You're looking for miracles, you're in trouble. Don't look for miracles. Look for God's word. He said, I am the way. He didn't say miracles are the way. Mm -hmm. He didn't say signs and wonders are the yes. way. He said, I am the way. And the, how do you look for Yeshua? You look for his word. Look for his commandment and keep it. Because if you don't, you're looking for miracles and Satan will give you one. And then so. the, the other thing, before we conclude, I want to encourage parents not to um, entrust their children with strangers, men of God or yes. women of God. You know, keep an eye on your children and protect your children. Don't trust people easily. In fact, don't trust people with your children. Let me At put all. it that way. Mm. Because your children are safe with you. Mm. If you trust them with other people, then be prepared for the consequences because man is not to be trusted. On, we, can, we are supposed to only trust God. Uh, what happened to her was because the parents trusted a man of yeah. God. The pain, they were looking for a miracle. Yes. yes. And mm -hmm. part of the pain that I went through growing up is when my parents would trust relatives and men of God with me. And these people really traumatized me. I just thank God that he kept me. He preserved me. Uh, I just want to beg you parents, protect your children. And the other thing I noticed in her testimony is the fact that even when the demons showed up, the fact that they had given their lives to Jesus, mm -hmm. the demons would not do anything to mm -hmm. them. So if you've not given your life to Jesus, your life is in danger. You only have insurance, life insurance in Jesus and protection in Jesus. So I just want to encourage you that at the end of this session, you give your life to Jesus. That reminds me of the story of uh, Jesus and Mary at the well. Uh, Jesus told that woman that, uh, the Samaritan woman, sorry, that uh, a time to worship God is now. Yeah, there's no time for wasting or going to consult the gods of your father. Jesus told her that, yes, your fathers worship on this mountain, but the time of worshiping me in truth and in spirit is now because. Now is the time you've got to worship God. So uh, we need to know the God we are worshiping. Do not lean on uh, the gods of your parents or your ancestors. Uh, nowadays, people are trusting so much upon the men of God than God himself. So you're wondering, where is God's place in our lives? The journey I've walked through has taught me how to trust in God more than to trust in men, trusting in God more because he has took me to, uh, he has taken me through the journey of trusting him where nobody else can take me out, where my mom, my dad, because my dad is lost, my mom uh, doesn't have knowledge, 
it is only him him whom i could lean on the men of god that uh, would help me were the ones taking advantage of me so where is your help your help can only come from god yes yeah, so i get to mombasa and now uh this is where another journey of my life begin uh still fighting demonic altars though at least now i i i uh i know christ uh um uh, i serve him but there are some altars that has have has to be broken from the roots and to be denounced so i get uh, i met this man uh who now married we knew each other i cannot say we fell in love because it took time before i even accepted to to get to his life so um we knew each other when i was still working so i got a transfer from mombasa to to kisumu uh because uh the another branch was open there so we knew each he approached me the day i was uh, getting transferred to to kisumu so i told him that the relationship could not work out just to put him off because uh, i was now getting transferred to kisumu so he insisted that uh, any relationship could work as, as long as you committed to it so i tried putting him off but he was so persistent so i had no so much experience about this issue of uh, dating because uh, what that guy had, had done to me long time ago uh, it uh, made me hate men actually so yes. much it made me um, not to trust men so until another lady spoke to me is when my eyes opened and i knew that not all men are like that so i threw a pastor uh, in the church where he was fellowshipping and threw a, a, a relative who was close to him and they convinced me until i i got to become his wife so i due to the distance i had to resign my work and that is when uh, how we got married here in nairobi and then we proceeded on to start our life now in mombasa so that's where the journey of my marriage life began uh it began well like every every woman is um uh, accepts to go to a man's life because of love yeah no woman is seduced by a man by being told that come here you dog or you <laughs> elephant come here and be be my by my wife every woman is seduced by good words so the love the care everything the provision is what attracts you to 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 the person, to get, to to the the person. yes so um i say that even if my heart doesn't uh, really love him let me just give it a chance because i see he loves me more so they also convinced me the pastor and the relative they convinced me that just give it a try you will come to love him so we got into married uh, marriage and uh, we started our lives Uh, he's a soldier so we we lived year one year two no child coming uh so year two i had told him about my ministry and everything and how i had planned according to me i had planned my future that i would not want any polygamy because he was coming from a polygamous uh, family so i asked him so many questions before he got to marry me I told him that now that you're coming from a polygamous family are you sure you're not going to get another woman uh because if you do I would not stand it because let me make it clear before we get into it so um he, another thing I told him that you should never uh, stop me from serving God so those are the conditions I gave him and he said he, he would never do that so I accepted we started uh living together year one year two no child coming year two he begins telling me about marrying another wife <laughs> at that time i'm uh, 26 years so he tells me 
he wants to marry another woman and then on a lighter note so he continued and then now every woman when she gets to her marriage she's advised by her mother to take care of her husband to love the people of her husband yani like uh, is it Esther who said where you go I'll go Naomi yes Ruth yes Ruth Ruth where mm-hmm. you go I'll go your people shall be my people yes. so that is what a wise woman advises their daughter when they are getting uh, married so that is what I went to. I went with my mom advised me to respect and love uh, now my new people and that is what I did and then being a uh, uh, somebody who had known God I built my marriage in uh, prayers the foundation of prayers so since day one I started praying for my family my marriage my husband and everything he does yeah when I was praying for him he used to uh, his ways were opening he was prospering like everything that was stuck was doing well whatever business he tried to do was never working if he doesn't consult me but what I what I tell him to do he does it and it prospers so everything i was in he involved me to do was prospering but what he does be without consulting me was not prospering so he went on uh, on a later note he asked me to bring in another woman and i told him hi it's too early and uh, why would you do that and i told you that i would not get into such so he went on after year three year four now i started noticing a lot of cheating uh until uh, one day innocently i receive a phone call we had traveled so i see a phone call uh, uh saved as uh, one of the 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 place of work those the seniors yes so i i saw a senior calling so i took him the phone i, I told him ah, there is your senior here is calling you So it was saved by the name of a senior person at work. <laughs> so I took it away. So he said, "Oh, he's calling me at the same. Okay, just return it back. I'll call him when I'm I'm free. I don't want him to call me to work and I'm on leave." So I returned it uh the phone not knowing that it was a lady calling. <laughs> so uh it went on like that. So remember, this altar has not been broken. So in my house I'm still being tormented now in my house. So these demons have followed me to Mombasa. So um he got a job mission. So he went to South Sudan for a mission. And then he left me in the house. So when I'm sleeping at night because I used to live in that fear still and uh, torment. So at night when I'm uh, I put my music uh when i was listening to my music on phone instead of the music the song singing when i woke up to the sleep from the sleep i feel like some demon singing a big choir of demons singing now they have turned the song i was listening to for example if i was listening to draw me close to you now i hear another song singing by so many people a choir of so many demons singing their own language so um it went on like that now the the sleep arrest became too much whereby you're sleeping and you become arrested uh so uh i used to be so much afraid in the house like you in the house i'm in the house alone and i could feel the presence So I did not know that I had combined now the altars had combined. Oh. Now the monitoring demons they have monitored me and uh, they have given me another person that is has another altar, you know. So he went on uh he served there on a mission for two years and then he came back. Now he came back, you know. The good thing with soldiers when they are away, they are good. They have a good relationship with their wives. But when they are around, they 
the relationship is not so good. So most uh, women prefer their husbands who are soldiers to be away so that they maintain they maintain the love <laughs> because when he's away he calls you he asks how you're doing but when he's around he's a mess mm-hmm. so i was i used to be happy when he's away because at least he could call he could send some money he could do this but when he's around is something else so um he goes for two years he comes back so uh the cheating persisted uh, it got to a point now whereby now he's now calling live in the house like we're seated like this and then he's calling he's calling a woman when i'm there the woman asks him what have you cooked and he's answering what i've cooked so so the woman believes that maybe i'm a cousin or something so it it went on like that uh on the other hand, I'm trying. I I was trying to uh, get a ch- a children for him, but like God shut that the heavens. I could pray. I could pray. I could seek the face of God. I could I could do not. There's nothing I did not do. I seek all uh, medical medication. The doctors confirm that there is nothing wrong with your womb until another one shows me the report. And he says, you can look at your womb. There's nothing wrong. It's so smart. So I was wondering, okay, what is happening? So it goes on. Uh, with cheating, it became worse. That now uh, the, he impregnated the woman outside the marriage. So that is when now it got worse in 2019. And uh, he told me told me now live that now I'm um, I asked I, I, I saw a message when he was at the bathroom and I asked him oh I can see you have another love and he said yes who is this is my second wife <laughs> and I was like oh that's how you've decided okay so we shall see so I got into prayers again praying for my husband for God to deliver him uh the pride and the authority he had given this woman uh was above me because um she was given much authority over me so there's nothing i could say so she was she calls me and she tells me i'm even planning to come to mombasa and when i come to mombasa we shall see who is the owner of the house (laughs) Mm -hmm. and you are sure Oh my god this is my house <laughs> okay so so actually it was pla- she was planning it was uh during uh high season christmas season that is what made her not to come because she tried booking the train and it failed it failed so at that time i had a voice telling me that i should go seek the face of god on the mountain so i asked god now where should i go seek your face and uh i did not know where to go so i thought at cataloni is a is a prayer mountain uh so i i had thought of going there so i was at the same time i was going to make a bride in nairobi they had booked me for a week so i was going there and then after i'm done with the bride i was going now i was proceeding to the mountain so i called a very close uh, uh sister i called her and i asked her that uh, i'm coming to nairobi and i i hear a voice telling me that i should go seek the face of god so would you uh you know maybe you know somewhere that you could go and uh have some prayers for like three three days i've been told to go for three days so she told me yeah at Ngong Hills. And I told her, why not Cataloni? She said, ah, nowadays Cataloni, people are just playing there. Let's go at Ngong Hills. It's where there is a lot of power. And I told her, had you gone there before? She said, yes, we had gone with a certain lady. And uh, it's a nice place. So I went. Just the way I, I was dressed up lightly. So I did not go know what I was going to face there. So I just went the way I was, <laughs> dressed up lightly. 
and then uh, I did not know that it was a mountain that has no house or anywhere to sleep. It's you and the mountain and the field, so and the cold. So I went there because I was desperate. I wanted, I wanted the fruit of the womb. Uh, let me speak to you, somebody out there. Never be too desperate for something that God has not approved. God knew, even even if it. Even if it takes 20 years and you're praying for the same thing and God is, has not approved it. Yes, it is God who gives the fruit of the womb. But have you asked him the reason why? You know, many a times we don't ask God, why are you not giving me? We only ask, why have you not given me? Yeah. And we are, we are not asking, why, Lord, haven't you given me? You know, so... We become desperate in such states. Maybe you need a husband. Maybe you need a car. Maybe you need a school fees for your children. Yes, it's their right. Yes, it's our right to get married. Yes, it's our right to have children because it's in the word of God. But do you know why you have not? So the desperation led me to do so many. Actually, it's a sin. I came to know that it's a sin not to trust in God. Of course. Yeah, not to put your trust. And Whatsoever uh, is not of faith yes, is sin. Yes. And not to let the will of God. Yeah, because I wanted God to answer me in my time and in my will. And according to how I know it, I knew that I'm married and I've stayed in married and I don't have, so I must have. And, and maybe you yeah. are also thinking that it could have resulted to yes. your husband looking for another woman. Exactly. Oh, sorry. Yes. Mm. So I knew that uh, for me to keep this marriage, I, there has to be a child. And that doesn't yes. work. A child doesn't keep a man who yes. has decided to go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Women have even twins and he leaves the day she gives birth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I in my house, I hosted uh, a woman who was given back to two sons, mm -hmm. and she has left. She's abandoned. So I used to ask him, are you sure it is the child you want or you want the marriage? Because if you want us to build this marriage, you can build it. If you, uh, you want us to build it all because of children, I don't think because marriage is beyond children. Mm. That is why God says, I will bless the fruit of your womb. You know, you and your husband are already complete. You know, these are just fruits yeah. that God adds to. And that is why they live after some times and they leave you, uh, the two of you. So I became so desperate, seeking, not seeking, not asking God, why are you not giving me? I only want and I want it in my way and in my will. Kumbe, that was sin. Yeah, it was sin to do that. So the desperation got me so desperate. I met this uh, lady. We go with her, very close person. We go with her to the mountain. She, we begin the prayers. So we begin the prayers. I noticed that she's a prophetess. She begins prophesying uh, to me about the past that happened and then about my friends she started mentioning names about my friends and telling me what they are going through and i was i got impressed and i said oh god has answered my prayer he has brought me a, a prophet just right at my uh, in front of me so we prayed uh, for three days i was happy uh, she even mentioned the name of the woman, but I did not know she, it was her whom she was mentioning because I had not known her name. But she was said, telling me, I'm seeing a woman really fighting your, your, your marriage. And uh, she's, uh, she's, her name is this, but I did not know that she was the one. So not everybody that calls the name of God or that prophesies is of God. Yeah. And this is what is destroying people. In this current uh, age, people are looking after uh, their problems being mentioned and uh, your past being mentioned. The name of your uh, the, the, the ex-boyfriend whom you left being mentioned. That is what is exciting us. So you see, I fell into this because the devil knew how desperate I was. So she begins mentioning these names and uh, I knew that I am with a prophet. So she helped me um, and uh, immediately after three days, I came back. 
so as the Lord instructed with the reason. So the Lord knew that uh, if I stay more than three days there, I will find this woman in my house. So that day that I was getting into Mombasa in my house is when I, I met the guy. Uh, he had finished calling her. So, and she was saying that she has missed the train. So if I continued staying in the mountain and then he told her that she has just arrived. So when I, if I had not obeyed the Lord's instruction, you see the Lord, the Lord is in the storm. But there's a reason why he's not acting. Because he even directs me to go and pray. Maybe the prayer was for protection. Because of what that guy had turned into. Because he became wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that he could do anything. Until now, um, the lady forms a story that, uh, of course, she had knew my name. So um, she calls the guy in Mombasa and he, she tells him that somebody has called me by the name Celine. Um, and she has really abused me. Tell her to stop insulting me or else. So when I reach Mombasa, I had not called anybody, even my girls at the place of work, because I was so busy and tired. So I remember calling one of my girls when I was almost at, at Mombasa. That is when I called one of the girls to ask her how they were doing at the place of work. So I had not called anyone. So when I reach at my home, uh, the guy tells me that uh, you are even calling uh, he, uh, I tell him that oh, me, I'm coming from the mountain I had gone for prayers and then he tells me whom did you call I told him I only called my, my girl one of my girls at the place of work and he tells me you, you Satan you Satan you are telling me you are coming from the prayer mountain and uh, you are there calling people and, uh, and threatening them and I told him I have not called anybody. So I just arrested those demons because I knew he wanted to pick up a fight. Mm -hmm. And of course, at that time, he would not understand anything from me. Of course. Yes. And uh, the spirit speaking. Yes, the spirit would not let him understand anything. Only that, only from that lady he could uh, listen to. So, um... I did not bother explaining anything to him because he would not understand. So I just went to the bedroom and I arrested those demons. I told uh, God to just give me peace and arrest those demons in him. It, it was like that lady had done something to him. So he was not himself at all because he was just eating and then he leaves the house. I see him on, on call. He eats, he leaves the house. He could even go on top of the roof. What? At times, I even prayed to God that, see, you just, I'm sorry about this prayer. I just told God, see, you just let him slide with the tiles, then he falls and breaks. Oh, no, that's a bad prayer. <laughs> yeah, it was a bad prayer. <laughs> it, it, it comes from an angle of hurting. Yes, of hurting. Yes, of hurting. Really yes hurt, I was yeah. really hurting. Yeah, so I thought that God would just make the tiles on top on the roof slide and pray let him break his neck so but i i just cancelled that prayer uh so he continued uh, uh it became worse so i noticed that the lady was pregnant uh one day when i i, I checked his phone uh it's like god was instructing me because one day I just pick a phone and the day i pick a phone i find something <laughs> something <laughs> Uh, something uh, news I find news so that day the latest uh, news I found was the lady had uh, uh, had gone to give birth and she was operated and the child passed on and he said and he sent 5,000 so when he sent that money uh, I think that is how the relationship broke up so that night I dreamt I, I saw the Holy Spirit really praying for me the, the, I saw a young girl kneeling and really crying when the Bible says that the Holy Spirit prays for us with groaning mm. yes I saw it in the dream she was praying until she was unable to pronounce words mm -hmm. 
she was praying in the spirit crying for and pleading god for me so that morning i wake up god directs me to look at his phone and i see the the child has died the lady has been operated and the sister uh, who helped me to pray she tells me that that pray, that your prayer has been answered that lady is gone the 5000 he has sent don't don't mind about it 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 has been sent for pain it is not for joy so let it go and it, that's how she's gone so true after sometimes i tried monitoring them and i saw the relationship was over they praised god he answered my prayer so that was 2019 2020 um i met him i i i i i, I noticed there's another one another one in another one in another one i noticed three <laughs> so with different names which i know um so when uh, when i tried to ask him what are you doing do you even care about your life live alone my life now do you even care about your life and he told me i got i must get you out of my life and he said and i must marry one of this one of what one of these ladies oh. one of the ladies who me had after they had separated with the other one he had like three more oh. which i saw their names yeah so he had like three so when i asked him at least to mind his life he said that uh i i i, I must marry one of these so um we went on like that praying 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 this other one used to abuse me she used to abuse me she sends me messages i remember one night i was sleeping and then i wake up to a message so when i checked on the message it was abusive so i took it and i went and presented it to god and i said god you are just god you know the owner of this house so uh if if um if i'm not you judge right and indeed the lord judged right so i went on it got to us now we had finished building our home which i i initiated the whole plan and how we are going to build it so we built it and i helped him so much everything i was making i was pumping into our house uh since the guy was so confused he reached a point where by he almost abandoned the house and you also know I, what i told you about the the powers of darkness in mombasa you really start building and finish the con- construction mm-hmm. so uh he almost left it halfway so with prayers a lot of prayers and uh, committing myself to it we finally finished uh we finally finished building it and then in 2020 we got in so when we got in uh i i conceived <laughs> wow no. so when i conceived <laughs> i had not experienced how uh having conceived feels like so i was experiencing all the what morning i was reading content. yes the morning uh, moods and everything so i i was so happy and uh you know it's the lady who prayed so i believe that i conceived through her prayers so I was so happy here i am i i was like that blind man who was healed by jesus so i went on spreading all over to my friends whom had taken long without conceiving and I was telling them come and see come and see a man of god come and see a woman of god you know i i started with one actually she lives, she follows life is spiritual uh, i go, i went and told her that uh, uh, please i want to introduce you to someone who can help you i uh, do this so uh, i invited her to mombasa when i invited her to mombasa she came and uh, i connected her 
to this lady. So me, I'm still pregnant. I'm like, I think two months. So I introduced her. I couldn't go uh, travel for the journey because it was long. It was, uh, they were going to Malindi. So I couldn't go with them. So they went and uh, I was left. So they went there and the lady was happy because she was prophesied to a lot of things. And uh, she believed that she was a, a prophetess of God. So we went on. Uh, the belly continued growing. I tell the guy, now the husband, that um, pregnant is not even interested. <laughs> you know, there I am. The belly continues growing. So after the prayers, she conducted the prayers at Malindi. She went back to Nairobi. So when she went back to Nairobi, she came back. Now she told me that she feels the Lord telling her that her ministry is here in Mombasa. So I told her, oh, if your ministry in Mombasa, that would be good because I'll introduce you to so many of my friends, some of who have not conceived, uh, I will int introduce you to them. So I was so happy having her in Mombasa so that those who are in bondage may be set free. So she came, I hosted her for two weeks as I organized my friends to, I told them a woman of God is coming. So I mobilized how we are going to pay her rent, how she's going to eat and everything. So I mobilized some of my friends and uh, they contributed her for her fare, for her, uh, her, her place of accommodation and everything. So I, so when she came, she continued confirming that uh, I was pregnant. So we went on like that. Now the guy started beating me up with this uh, pregnancy. Uh, I had adopted a daughter who is her, his uh, sister's daughter. So I was, we just met and she loved me. So I took her because her parents were not in a, a good position to take care of her. So I took her in. So she was like, she just became like me. So even now, everybody knows she's my daughter. So I took her in. Uh, we lived with her. So this guy, these demons, could beat this child. Used to beat this child. Until one day, I reasoned out that this guy is going to kill this child. And when people will notice that she's not my real biological child, they will say that I'm not her real mother. That is why I've allowed this man to beat him. So I had to go and report it at the local chief, the, est the estate chief, the one who handles the estate staffs. So I went and reported him. Uh, and I told her that uh, there's this child. I've been living with her. She's not mine. Actually, she was shocked because she thought she's mine. Uh, and the dad is really beating her. That is his niece is really beating her. And uh, here is the mark uh, for me trying to defend her. And here are the bruises from her. So he really beat her badly until she had bruises here. You imagine a soldier stepping on a child who is, <laughs> who is uh, 12 years. So he was beating her like he's beating a thief. Um, so I saw this is, this is, this is a demon. So I had to report him so that in case of anything, they would not accuse me of being negligent. So I, we continued. The prophetess came. We made her comfortable. I started uh, accompanying her, preaching, sharing, and everything. You are, you are still pregnant? Then. Yes, yes, I'm still pregnant. I'm about four months now. I'm excited. People are seeing the testimony everywhere I pass. You know, it's a testimony because I had stayed for that estate for quite some years. So at least when I'm passing, you see some women, they're like, wow, okay. So um, it was a testimony everywhere we go, we are accepted because they have seen God. Yeah. So um, we went on. Uh, God, 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 God can use as long as, like Paul said, as long as Jesus is preached, whether in truth or in false, as long as we are mentioning the name of Jesus, he is being preached. So somebody is getting healed because Jesus is being mentioned. 
and maybe me i took it genuinely me i took it that the lord has done it so i was even when i was sharing to these people i was sharing it with with all my heart yes i wanted them to see the greatness of god and how god operates so i did not know, i did not know the mission and the agenda of this lady so we went on uh, we preached we said the cup the jesus said the captive free and uh, people were seeing miracle uh, the lady whom I, i i introduced her to never conceived but another one we prayed for her within a month she had stayed for 10 years she conceived so god was working in his own way so it's not about men it is about god, god yes so don't put your trust actually cast is the man that put his trust in Amen. men so let us trust in god no matter what no matter the kind of miracle that we need let us trust in men so god did it i used to see god uh, working so um uh month 5 month 6 when it reached month 6 i started fighting evil forces i used to fight snakes in the dream i was fighting tiger tiger and snake and lion though the lions weren't so harming harmful i could see the lions just coming to stand at my doorsteps and they are not they are not doing anything though i was afraid to go out but the tigers were always coming for war and uh and the snakes then i remembered one of your documentary you were talking about the spirits the spirits of uh, dragon and the snakes and even an what she was talking about so i noticed the lady had the spirit of tiger this is what i was fighting because i'm walking with it so the tiger will devour me mm-hmm. so <laughs> i was walking with the tiger so the lord is showing me this is, but now i dream i go tell her yeah. <laughs> i dream i go tell her she covers it up so she had captured my mind so i believed in her because she was a very close person as well so we we uh, continued uh, i organized everything how she's going to put up a church because she told me she's opening a church so i organized how she's going to put up a church i used to carry my salon chairs and bring them i gave them the house uh, part of the house to have fellowship in the house which i was building part of it the other side so we were having fellowship there as a as a start so i was committed to serve this god that has done me miracle but now surprisingly or interestingly before she came i was just serving this god and i i had peace but now when she came yes a miracle has happened but nothing good is working yes everything that is how i lost my salon to a lady who may had i had trained from the scratch i am losing my marriage i'm losing nothing is working for her everything is working i'm preparing a table for her everything is working but to me everything is crumbling yes yeah that's witchcraft so, yes so that as you go down <laughs> yes she rises rise, yeah. we just talked about stars yes so they feed on our stars of course the false prophets so even these people go to churches and and uh they are they are they they are being given money by men of god they don't know that these people are buying their stars mm-hmm. yeah so she was feeding on my star because as she's rising i'm going down i've lost my job i'm losing my financial uh, uh, uh charmers i'm lo- i'm losing everything so and her she's rising actually i'm preparing everything uh before her so i went on like that until when it reached uh, i until when i had this dream about fighting a tiger and a snake we really fought we really fought the tiger came and it grabbed my womb this side and the snake came and it 
pierced and I was struggling and I was struggling and I was struggling and I'm trying to call call her I was trying to call her I was trying to call the name of Jesus and we really fought but I was able to push to push them away so eventually I pushed that tiger away and I pushed that snake away then I woke up that is when I stopped feeling the movements of the pregnancy <laughs> oh. yeah so that is how I stopped feeling it and that is how uh I lost it oh, I don't know what sorry. happened it vanished and now when I was now at that time now she had turned against me these friends that I was gathering for her she turned them against me lost my work losing my marriage the shame in the church everything I don't know what to explain to people and she just pushed me like that then one day she now we the testimony had brought 200 people because of the testimony and the pregnancy i had lost it so the marriage uh the relationship got worse so i came to realize that the guy was a uh, covenanted that he should not have a family so this covenant met the other covenant that uh, made the whole marriage a mess so eventually we could not stay together uh, because uh, it was not there was no longer marriage yeah there was no intimacy there was nothing so it became more violent and then uh, until now i I used to work from home. I had to made, make a decision to move my 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 business to uh, an, another place. So uh, that is how I moved the the shop. So when I came back in the evening, I had left the guy. He had come from work. He was on night duty. So after coming back from my shop the new shop which i was setting up the guy had burnt everything uh, that belonged to me and i thank god that i did not notice that evening that he had burnt everything so i what made me make up uh, my decision for leaving i overheard him talking with his mom so it's like when i left it's like they discussed with the mother and I remember the mother never liked me since day one. So I came to notice that I was not the right man for him because of the altars. And yeah, so uh, when, uh, I got, when I got home, I prepared him uh, uh, evening tea because I had not left him with lunch. I wanted to stay faithful until the last day. So that even the heavens may not have anything to accuse me of. I never cheated on him. I was there, a woman uh, ready to build my house. That is why I invested even in uh, constructing our house and rentals. So um, when I did not notice he had burnt my stuff that evening. So I made him tea, actually I borrowed milk to make him tea because I had no money. He never used to provide much. Whatever he was giving me was so little that I could not plan with it. So mostly I used to to spend my money because the Lord had told me through his word that I should not trust, put my trust in man that is able to provide me with much more than than a man could provide. So even yes. Yeah, so the Lord uh, had told me not to put my trust in men when I when I started complaining about what he was offering me for the whole month. It was very little that it is a shame even to mention on this platform. So um, when I complained, the Lord rebuked me through his word and he said that he's able to give me much more than more, uh, more than a man could give me. So even women out there who are putting their trust in men it is sin to put your trust in a man yeah 
it is sin. I did not know it. So don't put your trust even in your trust your husband, love her, I do. But don't put your trust in them. You might kill them because you trust them. You might kill your wife because you trust them so much. So God is a jealous God. So I learned not to trust uh I put my trust in my husband. I learned to to put my eyes on God. And you know what happened? God provided me with much more than him. Him was a salary person, but God provided me with much more. So I was above him financially. He could ask me for transport. I never lacked. So that is what God can do. I overheard um, um, Erica one day sharing that if you mistreat your wife, you're shutting your heavens. So your, your wife is an opener of your blessing. So you mistreat, he mistreated me, so God made me above him. Financially and everything, ideally and everything. So the conversation between him and uh, the mother, it was, it, it's what made me to make up my mind to leave the marriage. Because I overheard him saying that uh, uh, I know what I'm planning to do to her. So, and the mom asked again, is she back? And he said, yes, but don't worry about it. I know what I'm planning to do to her. So that is when I made up my mind to leave the marriage. So the following day, I woke up, I ironed his cloth. I made him breakfast. I went to my kitchen, I cleaned it. And I told God, this is my last day in my house. So I left and I left him there. So after two months, he brought in another woman, which was organized by the mom, the mother. So uh, from the word go before we were married, the mom had a plan to give him a wife. So immediately I left, the mom organized uh, for a pregnant woman. According to what I overheard, that the lady was pregnant already, not by him. But then he was brought to him immediately, two months after I left my marriage. So she occupied my home. I left. The Lord gave me a, a, a place. And uh, I've seen the faithfulness of the Lord. He has given me peace. Uh, he has not, I've never lacked. Uh, he has given me joy. And I thank God. I'm not advising anybody to leave their marriage for no good reason. Yeah, but if it's to a point of death, yes, yeah. please don't keep it. God will still love us. Uh, God still wants us. God, It's God who gives us life. So he cares about that life. So don't lose your life to somebody who has become a monster. Because God is happy when we are happy, even in those marriages. So I thank God because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah, God bless you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Indeed, it takes only God to give somebody who's been through a lot strength to overcome. And because of time, allow me to uh, give people who have not uh, given their lives to Jesus an opportunity. Please, you need Jesus. It's only Jesus who took her through that situation. And it's only Jesus who will take you through whatever situation comes your way. Amen. And single ladies out there, I want to advise you, do not marry a man who does not love God. Do not do it because you're setting yourself up for disaster. You need to marry a man who is a prayer warrior, a priest and prophet of his house. If you are not going to do that, you're going to marry somebody who's going to probably treat you like a punching bag. And he might be the nicest guy at the beginning. But it is not in man that walks to direct his steps, meaning that human beings are puppets for spirits. You were meant to carry the spirit of God in you. But now, if a man does not know that, if a man does not realize that, he's going to be eventually used by one spirit or the other. And that spirit will jump into him and start mistreating you. And just like she said, Celine said that man was about to kill her. It's just that the Lord helped and she overheard the conversation. So Jeremiah 17, 5 thus says the Lord, cursed be the man that trusts in man, that makes flesh his arm, 
whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert. A heath is a, a dry weed. He shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabit it. Now verse 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat comes, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So you see, if you don't live by God's word, by the promises in God's word, even getting your spouse should be by God's word. If you're hoping for a spouse, what word are you standing on? What word do you stand on for your finances? What word do you stand on for your health? What word do you stand on for your salvation? What word do you stand on for your relationships? What word do you stand on? Which scriptures can you quote for your children and for your future? If you can't quote any, you're not living by God's word. You're living hoping that a man of God will deliver you. And that is putting yourself in a position of desperation. And Satan takes advantage of people like that all the time. He said you'll live by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. So you should have a scripture for everything you expect to see in your life. And if you don't, you're living by guesswork. You're living in disobedience. And you will fall into the hands of the enemy. Because you are trying to get something from God, but without knowledge. You're trying to get something from God, but without his word. Yet Yeshua said, I am the way. So if you try to get something from God without coming through his word, you're trying to get it through another way. And Satan loves another way. Yeshua said, I am the way. So if you try another way, you're just like him. And he's going to feed you with what he has. He can only give you what he has. So if you've not received Christ, and if you've been one of those people who has not been living by the word, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, but you live by luck, you're hoping some powerful man of God will come into town and pray for you. You're living the way the devil would have you to live. There's only one way that man is supposed to live. And that is by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you don't live like that, you're living by guesswork. And Satan will victimize those who live by guesswork. They'll be desperate and desperate people do desperate things. So if you want to receive Christ, go ahead and pray this prayer after me. Say, Father in heaven. Father in heaven. I have heard your word. I believe, I believe that you sent your son, that you sent your son Yeshua, Yeshua to die for me. To die for me. Please forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Blot out my transgressions. Blot out my transgressions. Write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of life. For I believe, for I believe that you raised up Yeshua. That you raised up Yeshua from the dead. From the dead. And now he is seated. And now he is seated on the right hand of power. On the right hand of power. He is King of Kings. He is King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords. Please show me a church where I can be baptized. Please show me a church where I can be baptized. And give me godly friends. And give me godly friends. Whom I can walk with. Whom I can walk with. In this journey of life. In this journey of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And make me a new creature. And make me a new creature. And put the hunger. And put the hunger. For your word. For your word. Inside me. Inside me. That I may live thereby. That I may live thereby. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. We pray. We pray. Amen. Amen, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, look for godly friends. Look for a, a church where God's word is taught. Mm. Not the man of God is taught. Yeah. God's word is taught. Yes. Because if you're looking for a man of God, Satan will give you one. Mm. But if you're looking for the word of God, then God will give you his word. So, learn God through his word. And that's the only way you'll make it in this life. Because amen. without that, you'll be a victim of circumstances. Amen. 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 Learn God through his word. Yes. We love you, but Jesus loves you more. I remain Erika Mukisa Kimani, a.k.a. Mama Maisha or Mami Zion. And Zef. Amen. And I'm Baba Zion. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, honor, majesty, and power power from now henceforth and forever amen 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 erica part five altars and covenants
breaking generational curses and destroying the power of witchcraft. This is the fifth installment of the Erica Testimonial book series. Erica reveals how the enemy takes advantage of altars and covenants, details of how these covenants affected her and her family, and how she and her family were totally set free by the power of Jesus. Get your copy of Altars and Covenants now. Visit lifeisspiritual.org.